Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Daryl Wilson and today in this video I'll be showing you how to create a directory website with WordPress step by step. Now you guys are really going to like this video but before I show you guys what we're going to make today let me first explain what a directory website is. A directory website allows visitors to register and add their own listings about their business or service on your website. A directory website essentially connects the customer with the business. Business owners are always looking for new ways to create exposure for their business, so a directory website helps solve this problem. Here's how it all works. Let's say I'm running a painting business. Here is a directory website, and I'll click on Submit a Listing. Next, you as a website owner can choose to charge your customers for listings, offer memberships, or even offer free listings. After this, the business will then input their information like their company name, tagline, the days open, and any general information you want them to fill out. There's many features you can add. You can allow reviews, claim listings, which means businesses can claim those listings, and also direct messages on your website. And I'll walk you through more of this later in the video. After the business has submitted the listing, you can then approve the listing or charge them and collect payment and approve the listing. They will then have their business listed on your website as a directory so other visitors searching for specific services can find them easier. Your vendors will also get their own custom dashboard. On their dashboard, they can see a list of the views, their customer leads, and also their reviews. They can view their coupons, create events, create menus, create more listings, pay invoices, look at packages, and a whole lot more. Directory websites are the most popular and influential websites for business owner. Here's an example. This is Yelp.com. Yelp.com is a directory website and helps connect the customer with the business. When visitors are looking for products or services, they can first visit Yelp to see other users' experiences. I'm sure everyone watching this video has done the same thing where you look for companies with good reviews. In 2019, Yelp reported more than $1 billion in revenue, and in 2020, they reported $800 plus million. This definitely shows that these websites are lucrative and making a directory website is extremely profitable. Here's another example of a directory website. This is HomeAdvisor. This directory website is in the home construction niche and helps visitors find contractors or companies to help with home improvement services. In 2020, HomeAdvisor reported more than $1 billion in annual revenue. I know these websites don't look like much, but a lot of users prefer to use directory websites with real reviews over websites with no online presence. There's a growing demand for directory websites because we can see revenue increasing every year. So starting your own directory website for yourself is a project that is definitely worth it. And today I'll walk you through on how to create one step by step. So we will be building your website in five simple steps and we will use this checklist throughout the video to help us follow along in this directory website tutorial. Step one, we'll get your domain and hosting. This is where you can host your website online and also give your directory website a name like directorywebsite.com. Step two, I'll show you how to install WordPress and then I'll introduce you all to the general settings. Step three, we will download a premium directory WordPress theme and upload it to our website. Now there is a small fee to purchase this premium WordPress theme, but it is a one-time payment. Step four, I'll show you how to use the classified directory website. I'll go through all the options and explain how to properly manage and create listings for your directory website. Step five, I'll show you various ways on how to market your directory website so you can start getting traffic and monetize your classified ads directory website. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase fast cloud web hosting. And welcome to namehero.com. Now I've been recommending namehero.com for years and people love it. Uh, this week alone, I've had zero downtime with Name Hero, So you guys will have a reliable website. And also my websites load at under one second with Name Hero. So we do test these servers to make sure that you guys do get the best web hosting possible. Now, once you guys are here, you'll click on get started now and then it'll bring you to four different pricing options. So we have the starter cloud, the plus cloud, the turbo cloud, and the business cloud. Now, I personally recommend the plus cloud if you guys are just getting started out, like if you're just getting your feet wet for the very first time. But for those of you who have been using WordPress for a while and you want to upgrade and get some more performance, I would definitely go with the turbo cloud because with the turbo cloud, you guys do get the new NVMe storage, which does just give you a little bit more performance with your website. So you'll go ahead and pick a package that works best for you and your budget. And then once you guys uh, figure your package out, you'll go ahead and click on order now. All right, and here you're going to enter in your domain name. So this is the name of your new website. So uh, portfoliowebsite.com or you know mynewswebsite.com or whatever, whatever niche that you're building, you'll go ahead and put it here. So I'll just put it in tutorial domain 
one.com and see if that's available. All right, cool, it's available. Now I know it takes time to figure out the domain of your website, so you know, give it some time. You know, it, it does take some thought for your new websites. Uh, once you guys figure it out, you guys will click on continue. All right, cool. So next we have the billing cycle and we have three years, two years and one year. Now, personally, I'd recommend one year. You guys do get a large discount and this does give you enough time to decide if this is for you or not. However, if you guys are feeling very confident, I would recommend going with the two or three year plan. You guys do get the uh, deal the longer you sign up for. So uh, it really depends on your budget. But uh, once you guys select a billing cycle, we'll scroll down. And uh, I don't recommend any of these upsells personally. You can do this with free plugins. So yeah, you guys don't need those. And then we do get a free SSL with Name Hero. So that's pretty cool. Uh, once you guys select your billing cycle, we will then click on continue. All right, next we have the domain configuration. Now I personally recommend the ID protection guys. This will protect your personal information from spammers and people trying to sell you SEO packages and Viagra and all sorts of nonsense. Whenever you guys get those weird emails in your inbox, it's generally because they found your domain online. So this will actually protect you so you don't get spam in your inbox. So go ahead and click on ID protection and then click on continue. And look at that, for a year of hosting, you're paying less than $100, you're paying only 70 bucks. You guys can also go the cheaper routes and get the cheaper plan if you're on a really tight budget, but I think this is a great deal for web hosting for the entire year for this specific performance. So you guys are getting a reliable and a fast server for this price, so it's definitely worth it. So uh, go ahead and scroll down, just keep scrolling. Now you're gonna go ahead and fill out your billing information here, so your first name, your last name, uh, additional information. You'll put in your password and also a support pin. So this would be the pin that uh, they would use to verify that it's you. And then also we have uh, payment methods so you can pay with PayPal, Coinbase, which is cryptocurrency and credit card. Here you'll go ahead and put in your payment details. And if you guys do want to get their spam or their emails, they actually send some pretty good emails guys. I'm not gonna lie, they have some cool uh, promotional offers. You'll go ahead and check that box. And then you'll, of course, uh, agree to their terms of service, right? I'm sure you guys are all gonna read uh, this here, right? You guys are all gonna read this. I don't think anyone ever reads any of this stuff, but uh, yeah, you'll go ahead and uh, check the terms of service. And once you guys have checked out, I will meet you guys in the customer portal. All right, and welcome to your new dashboard. So this is your current dashboard. As you guys can see, I had many different packages, many domains, and I also have tickets with Name Hero, and they really helped me out with all of my problems. So this is just your interface. On the left side, you can see your hosting packages. These are your current domains. You can always register a new domain. Uh, also billing. So if you wanna see your payments or you wanna add funds or you wanna adjust your payment methods, you can do that here. And also the support. So if you guys run into something weird, I know with websites, things just kinda of get weird sometimes. Uh, you guys can always open a ticket here and they will help you out with all of your problems. And they are pretty fast. I mean, I think maybe under one hour, they can help you guys with all your problems. So once you guys are here, let's go ahead and install WordPress onto our new domain. You'll first click on My Cloud. Now here we have hosting packages. Now you should probably only have one here. So just go ahead and click on your hosting package. And next we're going to see this Login to cPanel. Go ahead and click on Login to cPanel. All right, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and install WordPress onto our domain. So up here, we'll type in WordPress. Here we go, we have WordPress Manager by Softaculous. We'll click on this. All right, and from here, we're going to install WordPress. You guys can see I had many installations of WordPress already, but right here, you'll click on Install. And now we're going to look for the domain that we purchased. So right here, you have the Choose Domain section. So you'll probably see your domain that you purchased. I'll just go ahead and select this one, but you're going to select the domain that you purchased. And for the protocol, make sure this is HTTPS which is the SSL. Now for indirectory, make sure nothing is here. All right, I don't know why that's there by default, but oops, <laughs> whoops. But uh, make sure nothing is there because that will install your domain onto like yourwebsite.com slash something and you don't want that there. It, it, yeah, just don't have that there. Make sure, that's, make sure that's empty. Now for the admin username, go ahead and give yourself an admin username and a password. And this is what we are going to use to log into the website. So whenever you wanna build your website, you're going to use these login credentials. So make sure you write these down. I'll just put admin. Never put pass, guys. Uh, make sure this is something unique. I'll just put uh, paddywhack. 
and your admin email. Make sure that this is an email that you have access to because when you forget your password, they will send this information to your email. So I'll put in my, my Gmail account here, my famous PC hoarder, which I do get tons of spam. And below that, you can always select your language. We can always adjust the language as well uh, inside the WordPress dashboard, and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. And we're going to keep scrolling down here to the bottom. They have these other themes they want us to use, but uh, we're not going to use these. And right here, you'll click on install. Yeah, they said three to four minutes. That was not three to four minutes, right? Now here we have install WordPress, and this is the administrative URL. Administrative URL. So just go ahead and click on this link, and this will log you in to your website. All right, awesome. So now we have WordPress installed, and our website is now live on the internet. And if you want to see what your website looks like right now on the internet, at the top left right here, you'll just click on visit sites. And this is the current theme that they are giving us, and it is really bland, really boring, ugly, but not to worry, we'll make it look really good. So to go back to your dashboard, go ahead up here and click on dashboard. Now that we have our website online, now let's go ahead and adjust some of these general settings. The first thing we want to do is go to users and click on profile. Now in the future, if you guys ever lose your password, or if you want to change the color scheme, this is where you're going to do it. Uh, I think for this video, we're going to use Midnight. I just like Midnight. It's really easy to see. Uh, these other ones are just really, really tacky. I mean, this, that's way too much, you know? So yeah, I think we're going to go with Midnight. I just like that. It's a lot easier to see. And uh, we're going to scroll down here. Now, you can always adjust your email. So uh, you can always change your email. And remember, this is important because if you forget your password, the password will be sent to that specific email. So you can always adjust that at any time. And below that, we have a new password. This is where you're going to uh, change your password. So for WordPress, if you ever want to change your password, this is where you're going to do it. And once you've made all the changes that you want, you'll go ahead and click on Update Profile. Now, let's say, for example, you guys speak a different language. On the left side right here, we have Settings. We'll click on General. Now here you can enter your email or you can update it at any time. So if you get a new email address and you want to update it, you would do that right there. And below that, we have the site language. Now, if you change this, uh, this will actually apply to the back end. So you can put any language that you speak. So if you speak Spanish, Portuguese, Arabic, Hindi, whatever, you can adjust the language for your uh, back end options. And below that, we'll go ahead and click on Save Changes. The next thing that we need to do is we need to adjust our permalinks. On the left side, you're going to see permalinks. Now here we have a few options, but you want to select this as post name. And the reason why we do this is because when you go to a website, you see like, you know, your website.com slash shop, right? Not like all this, you know, numbers and uh, it just looks really cluttered and ugly. And the post name option is the best for SEO purposes. So once you select the post name, you'll scroll down and click on save changes. All right, now let's say, for example, you guys want to log in and log out of your website. Maybe you're at a friend's house and you want to, you know, mess around with WordPress. Uh, first, what I'll do is I'll log out. So right here, I'll go ahead and click on log out. So right now I'm logged out of my website and there's no way for me to enter it. So whenever you want to log into your website and make changes, you'll go to your address bar and type in dash WP dash admin and press enter. From here, you guys can enter in your login credentials that you guys use to install WordPress. So I believe mine was admin and it was Paddywhack, right? Paddywhack, we can always take a look here. Remember me and login. So that's how you guys can log in and log out of your WordPress website. So you can pretty much work on your website from any location. Hey, welcome back guys. So we got the techie stuff out of the way, right? You guys got the hosting. We know how to use the general settings. So now let's go ahead and move on to step three, which is to upload the premium WordPress directory theme. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step and download and purchase a premium WordPress theme to create our directory website. Now, if there is a link in the description of this video, it'll take us to a page to purchase. You guys ready? Listing Pro. Now, Listing Pro is the number one best-selling directory theme for WordPress, and for good reason. You know, I've actually tested this theme thoroughly, and it has all the features, and it's also the most stable. A lot of the WordPress themes that I tested before I made this video were very glitchy, and I just didn't feel confident recommending any of the other directory themes. But this one, hands down, was the most stable. It's very lightweight, and it offers all the features that you guys need for a directory website. So let's go ahead and purchase this WordPress theme and then I'll walk you guys through on how to use this theme. 
So this team does carry a small fee and it is $69. That is incredibly small because if you think about it, if you were to try to build a director website by yourself with bare code, good luck. You're gonna be spending probably 20 to 30 to 40 grand, but uh, this theme is only 70 bucks and this is a one-time payment. So you don't have to pay this ever again. So just keep that in mind. So go ahead and click on add to cart and then we'll go to checkout. Now, once you guys go ahead and purchase this WordPress theme, I'll go ahead and meet you guys in the uh, customer dashboard. So I'll go ahead and go through the process and purchase this and I'll meet you guys on the very next page. All right, so this is my customer dashboard and here's a list of a lot of the themes that I tried. You guys can see that I, I did try quite a few. A lot of them are just really glitchy and a lot of them just did not work at all, but the listing pro theme worked really well and I feel really confident recommending it. I believe it is on the second page of my uh, downloads. You guys can see I do purchase a lot of themes and I test them out on my own free time. So it does take me uh, quite a bit of time to make these videos. I do believe it is right here. Here we go, Listing Pro, ah, there it is. So this is the theme that we're gonna be using. Uh, once you guys find this theme in your little download section, just go ahead and click on Download and click on Install the WordPress file only. Now you guys also will need to see your purchase code as well. So make sure you guys get that as well. So right here. Let's click on Installable WordPress file only. So now you guys see at the bottom left, it has now downloaded onto the computer. Also, you guys might need to get your purchase code. So go ahead and just uh, download your purchase code as well. This is the code that you'll need to activate the WordPress theme. So once you guys download that, we'll go back to our website here, and then we'll go to Appearance and click on Themes. And then at the top, we'll click on Add New, and then click on Upload Theme, and choose the file. We're then going to go ahead and upload the zip file that we downloaded. So the one that you guys downloaded, the zip file, just go ahead and click on it and click on open. And then you'll click on install now. Now this might take about 30 seconds to upload. It's a little bit larger, so just give it time. All right, cool. So once you guys have successfully installed the theme, you'll then click on activate. Now, once you guys activate the theme, it's going to run you through a setup wizard. So just go ahead and click on start. Next, it's gonna ask us for the page builder. Now, we're gonna use Elementor. W Bakery, that page builder is just not good. <laughs> it's just not good. Elementor is way better and it's drag and drop a lot easier. Most of you guys watching this video obviously know uh, Elementor is a great page builder. So go ahead and click on Elementor and then click on Next. Now it's going to install the necessary plugins. And this is another reason why I picked this theme. It only recommends up to like maybe five plugins. A lot of those other WordPress themes, they wanted you to install like 20 or something. It was crazy. So go ahead and click on, yes, I'm ready. And it's now going to install the necessary plugins for your directory website. You guys don't need the social login, but you guys do need these other ones. So technically you only need about, I wanna say five plugins to operate your directory website. So let's just give it a minute. All right, and now we have three different demos. And I do wish they had more demos to choose from, but I think we can all work with this. So we have Classic, Places Pro, and Restaurant Pro. Now, we're gonna go ahead and use the Classic. Now, once you guys learn how to use the Classic, you guys can make your own restaurants, directory website, or places like, uh, you know, reviews or barber shops or whatever. But we can use Classic to get started and just to get you familiar with this WordPress theme. So make sure classic is selected and then click on accept. Now it's going to import the demo content just like the demo. So go ahead and click on import content. Now this process might take about a minute, so just give it about a few minutes. All right, that was a lot faster than a minute. So it probably took 30 to 40 seconds and it automatically redirected us to the dashboard. Now this is where you're gonna enter your, your purchase code. So remember earlier how I told you guys to download that other file, that will contain your purchase code. So go ahead and paste your purchase code right here, and then you'll click on Live Site, and then you'll go ahead and activate the WordPress theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my purchase code and activate this WordPress theme. All right, cool. So once you guys have entered in the purchase code, it says, congratulations, your site is now activated. Now, when you guys use the purchase code on your website, you guys also do get support from the author. So let's say, for example, you guys are having an issue or something's not working. You guys can actually click on the actual WordPress theme, go to support, 
And here on the support page, you guys can go ahead and give them your license code, and then they can go ahead and log into your website and see if you guys have any issues down the road. Because I realize sometimes uh, other users might have random errors, and that's really out of my control, but the support can definitely help you guys with any problems that you guys have with your website. So enough of that, let's take a look at our directory website. So we did install the demo content. So let's click on visit site here and see what our website looks like right now. All right, so you guys can see the content has been successfully imported. Now, some of these might have placeholders and that's okay. I'll show you guys how to add in your own images here, but this is essentially locations. And then scrolling down here, we do have other listings and these are advertisements as well. We'll talk more about ads a little bit later in the video. And then we just have some general content, right? So we have more blog posts and overall, it's just a really clean, really simple directory website. All right, so let's move on to the next step and let's talk about how to design your website using a drag and drop page builder. Now at the top right here, you'll see this edit with Elementor. Go ahead and click on edit with Elementor and this will turn on the page builder. All right, so let me go ahead and give you guys like a five minute demonstration of how to use this page builder. If you guys are already familiar with Elementor, you still might wanna stick around because parts of this website are using the theme options in the back end. Now, when you guys turn on the page builder, you guys might notice here that you can't drag in elements onto this specific part. This part is actually controlled by the theme options in the back end, and we'll talk more about that later in the video on how to design and customize this specific section. But let's just go ahead and scroll down here to the very next section. Now on the left side, you're gonna see elements, right? And I know for those of you using Elementor, you guys probably know that these elements are the default elements that come with uh, the Elementor page builder. So for example, I can drag in a heading text here, I can center it, and then you can change the text, right? So um, I don't know, like oh, what's cracking or what's 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 cracking in these cities, you know, or whatever you want to put. And then here you can also insert a link and change the alignment and so on and so forth. So the content tab will actually control the actual content of the element, right? And next we have the style tab. The style tab generally controls the colors and the fonts, and also adds in things like text shadow and just other small. Uh, designs to those elements. So for example, I'll change this to black, right? And for the topography, we'll go with Poppins, right? Everyone loves Poppins. You guys know I like Poppins, that's my favorite font. And then for the weights, I'll just bold it. And then here you can design it a little bit more, you know, giving it uh, italicized or oblique or whatever. And then you can also adjust the line height and the letter spacing as well for your specific um, element, right? And then on the advanced tab, we have some other small options right now. I'm not going to cover margin and padding just yet, but there are some things that you can add to kind of give your site a little bit more fun, right? Like motion effects, you can have it fade in, right? Or fade in left, or let's see here, fade in up. That's actually pretty sleek. I like that. Just don't do the ones from the right to the left, like, bleh. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's a lot, you know, that's too much. And then they have some other options here that you guys might want to look at, like uh, borders where you can add a border to this element and stuff like that. So uh, that is the advanced uh, tab. You know, you guys can go ahead and check those out on your own time. We'll talk more about the margin and padding a little bit later. Now, guys, I do have another video on Elementor that goes through every elements, all the options, and I'll leave that video in the description for you guys. But for this video, we're just gonna kind of cruise through these elements and we're just gonna, you know, just kind of learn it uh, as we go. So let's say, for example, you guys do want to drag in another element, like a button, right? We can put the button in the center and then we can change this. Uh, they have different types here and I think it changes the color. Sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> so uh, if you want to change like the actual color, just go to the style tab and then here you can adjust like the color of it, giving it like a red or whatever. And then later on, once you have other pages, you can link them right here. So if they click on this button, where do you want them to go, right? We can put, uh, you know, my website, right, DerWilson.com, or whatever page on your website. So we can, you know, link them to different listings or to different uh, parts of the website, right? Now, let's say I wanna delete this element, right? I'll just right click, delete. Right click and delete. Now, whenever you guys wanna add in elements, we'll click on this plus icon here or add in rows. And then I'll just click on this plus icon here. And then here you can add in specific rows, right? And now you guys can actually just start with a one column row and then you can insert columns inside of that row. So for example, I'll click on the elements tab and then I'll take this intersection and I'll drag it in there. So now we have two columns, right? 
And we can always go ahead and duplicate this column to make it three columns. Do you see that? And then from there, we can drag in elements, right? So I'll drag in some text. I will then drag in a button and then maybe like an image, right? We can grab an image here and put it above there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Right click, delete. We got to put it in the box, all right? So we have to kind of, we have to make it, there we go, that's better. And uh, let's say, for example, you guys want to upload an image to your website. You'll just click on choose image, media library. And this is where you can upload images, right? Or I'm sorry, the upload file is where you can upload images to your websites. Uh, for now, let's just use the media library and just use these stock images it's given us. And then I'll just click on this, uh, this happy dude right here with that girl in the background. And there we go. And then from here, you guys can, you know, make anything that you want just by simply dragging in elements and stuff like that. And, you know, just a quick tip, I'll go ahead and delete these columns here. Give you guys a little shortcut. You guys can always just duplicate one little column and that will actually just duplicate the entire thing. So you don't have to do everything all over again. So you can design one column and then kind of just, you know, work based off of that. So that's how you guys can kind of add sections and add in elements. And again, I do have a video that goes through all the elements and the page builder. So if you guys do need more practice, you guys can go ahead and watch that video. But uh, to speed this video up, I'm just going to uh, keep going here. So I'm going to delete this section. And here we have these cities and this is location. So later on in the video, we're going to create locations, right? And locations are areas where people might have listings. So for example, people who uh, get sign up on your website, they might have a listing somewhere in Los Angeles or New York. We can create those locations and have users submit listings based off of location, right? And I believe this is the locations uh, widget. So for example, we can type it in here and you'll see locations. So this is the same exact widget right? Yeah, same exact one. And there's also different styles of it. So once we actually add images here, this will look a lot nicer. But uh, here you can see that we have different styles of how you can present your locations. Uh, for example, you'll see California, Chicago, Georgia, uh, we can add images over here. So don't worry about that. We'll come back to that a little bit later. Uh, here we have different views, right? I guess that one's cool. And then we have a grid view as well. Right? That's, that's pretty standard. I do like this other one though. I do like the box view. I feel like this is more compact and easier to kind of, to kind of go with, right? What do you guys think? Uh, this section here, I don't want it, right? We don't need it. So I'm going to right click and delete this. Now let's go ahead and just explore a few more listings here or a few more elements here. So let's go ahead and scroll down and just take a look at some of these other, um, I guess you want to say listing elements that we got. Uh, you know, I have not used all these elements, guys, to be quite honest. So don't, uh, I'm not an expert for every single element. So let's take this content box right here and I'll drag it right there. And here we have like this planning, right? And we can duplicate this, right? To like, you know, maybe this can be like a satisfaction guaranteed. And here we can go ahead and insert the content inside of it, right? So uh, we can change the text to whatever we want. They do have other styles. They have an old style and a new style. What, what's that? Oh, I guess it's like a, a new modern style. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. And then here we have social icons where you can adjust the icon for these boxes. So on your own time, feel free to just go through these elements and, and just kind of mess around with them. The best way to learn how to use these elements is just by simply finding out what each of them do. Um, you know, just by dragging and dropping like a video testimonial. Here you can probably insert a preview image and then a video URL. And then this can be some sort of demonstration about your specific services. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And also actually, I don't know, should we leave this? I like this, you know, we're, we're leaving that it made the cut. <laughs> you know, It made the cut. So that's the, a quick rundown guys of the actual page builder, and also some of the elements on your own time, feel free to kind of just mess around with these see what works best for you. Uh, but I do like this one here. Oh, I do want to show you guys this one the listing checkout. This is a good one. So later in the video, we're going to have like a checkout, right? But this here will actually demonstrate like your checkout and you can insert this anywhere on your page, which I do like, you know? So after we do the actual payment processors, you can actually add this to any part of your website. Looks really cool. I really do like that, but uh, we got, it has to go. Here we go. Delete that. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step and let's now create some pages and add a menu to our website, right? So we know how to use the page builder, but uh, let's say, for example, we want to add a menu and also create pages for this website. Let's do that. Let's go over here and go over to exit the dashboard. 
All right, and then right here, I'll click on this little WordPress logo, and this will bring us back to our actual backend right here. So I'll go ahead and click on a dashboard. We can go ahead and close all these notices. They do give us quite a bit of notices, and this is really annoying to be honest. Now, I know right here, we have a lot of different um, options. Don't worry about this. We'll go through each of them. So don't feel like it's overwhelming. We'll tackle one by one, guys. That's why we're watching this video, right? Make things easy. <laughs> so uh, here we have pages, right? And if I click on all pages, these are all the pages on our current websites. Now, uh, when you import the demo contents, they do create some pages for us automatically. But uh, let's just say, for example, you wanna make your own page, right? Uh, at the top right here, I'll click on add new page and give your page a title. So this will be the services page, right? And then I'll click on publish and publish. So right here, I'll click on view page. So I made the services page, but obviously it's just a blank page. Like there's nothing on it, right? So let's actually kind of edit this page. At the top, I'll click on edit page and go back to the page options. And then on the right side, you'll see templates. So for the templates, I wanna make sure this is Elementor full width. So this is what I want to select if I want to use the page builder to actually design the page. So I'll click on Ed Elementor full width, then I'll click on updates, and then we'll click on edit with Elementor. And then we'll start designing the website using the drag and drop page builder again. So it's pretty simple, right? We have the actual services page, right? And here we have the plus section where we can add in columns. And just like we did the front page, we can do the same exact thing, right? So heading, and then we have the button, right? And then we also have the image right here. And then just like we did before, I'll delete these columns because I'm really lazy, right? You guys know I'm a lazy guy. So I'll go ahead and just duplicate this again and duplicate that. Now there's one thing I do want to talk about. So you guys can see here that we have this bar right here or this white space and it's really close to the top right it's almost like it's it's clashing let's talk about padding so i'm going to click on edit section here and go to the advanced tab here we have padding now what padding is is space so for example i'm going to click on link values together and then i'm going to add in some padding here right so we're just adding in space above this column so as you're building your websites you know for example we'll do the same thing here you might want to add in some padding here just so that your elements are not so uh, scrunched up together, right? So for example, we have heading and I'll put in the text and then we will throw in a, uh, I don't know, we should put in a video here or something like that, right? Actually, the video is too big. Yeah, that's too big. But anyway, so here we have this new section, right? And you guys can see it's just too close to this button right here. So what I can do here as well is click on the dots, go to the advanced tab and just add in some adding add in some space right here, just so that it's not so close, right? So as you build your website, feel free to add in padding to each section, just to make sure they're not too close together. So once you guys go ahead and finish designing your page, you'll then just go ahead and click on update there at the bottom. And then we can go over here to this hamburger icon and click on view page. All right, so this is your services page. And if we scroll down, you'll see we have this very generic content, you know, and we have our text, right? But I'm just, I'm just demonstrating here how to actually create a page and how to add it to your website. So now that we created a page, let's talk about, well, you know, how do we add this to our menu? You know, we just have this admin here and, and this ad listing, but we don't really have any pages where users can navigate our website. So let's do that. Let's go back over here to dashboard. And then we're gonna scroll down and go to appearance and go to menus. Now here I want to select the, see we have the home page menu, right? Or we can create a new menu. In fact, let's do that. Let's just create a new menu. So here I'll click on create a new menu. And this will be the main menu of the website, right? So main menu, and this is the home page menu. And then I'll click on create a menu, right? So on the left side, we have pages, right? Now, which pages do you want to add to the menu? So I want the home page. And these are the sample pages that was created for us automatically when we imported the demo contents. So I'll go ahead and also add in the blog, the contact, right? And then I also do wanna add in the services page. Remember how we just created that services page? I wanna add that to the menu as well. So once you select the pages, you'll click on add to menu. And then from here, we can rearrange the pages, right? So usually contact is it's at the bottom, right? So let's mess around with this, there we go. 
You guys can also add a drop down menu by taking this and dragging it below that. So now this is a drop down menu. Uh, once you guys are done creating your uh, menu and you, you drag in the pages that you want, you'll then just click on Save Menu. All right, so let's take a quick look at our website and see what has happened. Let's go over here to Visit Sites. Let's see what's going on here. All right, so that looks a lot cleaner, right? So now we have the home page, right? We have the services with a drop down, and then we have the contact. Now here, if I click on the services page, you'll see it brings us to that page that we created. So uh, that's pretty cool. All right, so now that we have the directory theme, we can now learn how to use it. Now this theme is not that hard to learn, but uh, I'll go ahead and make this very structured so you guys can understand step by step. It does take a little time to learn, but just about maybe like a few hours, you'll definitely get the hang of it. So let's get started. All right, so at this point, I think we can kind of understand what we're doing so far. So we know how to add pages. We know how to create a menu. We also know how to use the page builder and kind of add elements to those pages. But let's just go ahead and quickly just navigate our website really quick. So we have this search button, right? Just click on search here. Just go ahead and just click on it and see what happens, right? So this is our listing page, right? And this shows us the current listing. It also shows us the locations. And you guys can kind of like just take a look here. Uh, we're going to design all of this a little bit later. You guys can customize this in the theme options. But I just want to get you guys a little bit familiar with the actual listings itself. So here we have this listings, right? And, uh, you know, we have the images up here. We have the title, submit a review. People can share it and save it. So there are a lot of options here that we can add or we can restrict for each specific listing. But this in general is an actual listing on the actual website. So when people come to your website and they create a listing, this is how it will display on your website. And of course, we can design and customize the format and everything, but this is all demo content. So feel free to either delete this later or you guys can build on it. It's really, really up to you. But uh, here you can see we have another listing, which is just an example of someone with like a spa and they have like their services that they offer. We have some description and then they also have the claim. Now people can report it or they can go ahead and message the uh, the admin manually right here on your website, which is pretty cool. So that's just an example of a listing. And then this is also the listing page. So now that you guys understand what the listings are and the listing page, let's now create a listing, right? So let's go ahead and click on this little listing pro logo. And let's go to the dashboard here. All right. And on the left side, you're going to see listings. Now, before you create a listings, you might want to create a category for it, right? Or features or tags or even a location. So let's do that. Let's first go over here and click on categories. Now, these are the default categories right here that the demo content has created for us. So they created hotels, real estate, restaurants, services and stuff like that. But uh, what I'm going to do is create my own category and I'm going to type in agency agency. And then this would just be the URL, right? The slug. And then this is the description of the agency. So agencies that work in the digital world. And here we can enter in a category icon for that specific uh, category. Now there's several websites you guys can use to get images for this specific section. You guys can go to something like free pick where you can just simply go ahead and search for icons and they do have a lot of icons for you guys. So for example, business icons, you guys can just go ahead and grab some of these icons uh, and add them to your website if you choose to do that. But what I'm going to do right here is just right click on this uh, little home and just save this, right? And then I'll just use this image just to speed up the tutorial, right? But uh, I'm just showing you guys that you guys can get images from free pick. I'll also leave other websites in the description of this video to help you guys out. But uh, right here, category icon, I'll go ahead and upload that file. So here we have the download open, right? And insert that. And then also we have the icon on banner as well. We can just insert the same image. And then also you can do the same thing for the category banner as well. So that's just an example of how you guys can, you know, add an images to your specific categories. Once you guys are done, you'll click on add a new category. All right. So now you guys will see that we have the agency right here, right? So the agency is there. Now we need to next add in features, right? Because you guys notice right here how this says features to add to the listing and we have these default features. However, we might want to create features on our own. So the next step is features. 
So let's go ahead and click on features. So next let's go ahead and add in some features for our categories, right? So uh, over here we have this listing and you'll see that on this specific listing we have features. So this is a carpenter website and their features are advertising, bookkeepers, electricians, home cleaning, and so on and so forth. So let's add some features to our specific um, categories. So over here, I will type in e-commerce, right? E-commerce. And then below that, we have a feature icon. So these are the icons that will be displayed right here on the actual uh, features. So let's click on the Font Awesome websites, and this will take us to Font Awesome. So let's go ahead and scroll down. And these are some of the icons that you guys can use on your website. You guys can also search for icons as well, but I'll just keep this very basic. I'll just grab in the, I don't know, a user or something like that, a user circle. So we'll just click on this one here. And this is the code that you guys need, right? So F a user circle, we'll just copy that, go back to our site and just paste it in there. That's it. And then click on add a new feature. So now you'll see that we have e-commerce and then we have the feature icon right there. So that's pretty, pretty simple, right? Let's add in one more. So over here, I'll just type in website creation and then I'll just type in websites and then we can do the same thing here. We can look for one more icon, right? Let's go ahead and scroll back here and just find in another icon. So for the websites, I'm just going to use this area charts and just click on this one. And then I'll just copy and paste this uh, code right here. We'll go back to our sites and I'll just simply paste this in there for the website creation and click on add new feature. And then you'll see we have website creation and then we have the feature icon. So that's how we can add features to our listings, right? And as we create the listings, you guys can assign these features to every single listing. Your visitors will also be allowed to add these features on their listing. So it's pretty important that you guys do create features. Now let's talk about tags. So right here, we'll click on tags. So next we have tags and tags make it an easier way for your users to find out uh, the services that users have to offer on your website. For example, we have this accept credit cards, right? And if I click on view here, uh, this will then display all of these services or products that contain credit cards or accept credit cards. So we know that these two websites right here are services both accept credit cards. So you wanna make sure that you add appropriate tags that will make your site easier to navigate. So for example, right here, I'll just do something like a free, or I don't know, no tax. I, I have no idea, guys. I'm just throwing that out there, right? It's just a feature that you guys can add right here. So I'll just uh, create no tag and then add that tag. All right, and as you guys create the tag, you'll then see that it's displayed right here. Now, later on, you can assign specific tags and also help users search by tags. So these will be very important a little bit later in the video. So um, just make sure that you add tags to your site that helps users navigate your site a little bit easier. So now that we covered the category, the features, and the tags, now let's talk about locations. So next we have locations, and these are the locations that your users will submit when they are listing listings on your site. So for example, if you operate in the United States, you might want to add the specific states or cities where your users are going to post listings. So for example, here we have some demo content. We have some states in the United States, but uh, if you guys are working like Yelp on a, uh, in the whole country, then you might want to list every single state in the country. However, if you are operating in places like Utah, then you might want to list all of the cities in Utah so users can submit their website or their service correctly. So let's go ahead and add in a new location. So I'll go over here and type in Nevada. Let's, get, let's give Nevada some love. You know, how come all these demo websites never include uh, Nevada, right? I live in Asia and everyone's like, well, I never heard of Nevada, but I've heard of Las Vegas. It's like, well, it's in the same area, you know, that is in Nevada, but uh, that's just how it is. So here we have the actual location, right? And then I'll just click on add new location, right? So here we have the actual locations, right? And if we go to our site over here, I'll go ahead and click on the site and then we'll scroll down. Here we have a list of our cities and then you'll see that Nevada pops up. Remember earlier how I said we'll come back to that a little bit later, right? So here are the current locations for our website. And if someone clicks on this location, 
they will then see that the listings um, within that state will display here. Now we can assign specific listings to states. So when we create listings, I'll show you guys how to do that. But uh, I might wanna add images, right, to these locations because we have these placeholders. So let's do that. Uh, here we have the states, right? And we have Nevada. So I'll click on edit right here. And for the location image, I will click on insert image. And then I'll use this map, right? Like, uh, I don't know, like traveling map or something like that. And then I'll insert this into the post. And then we will click on updates. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and go back to our website here and let's refresh the page. And let's just hope this works. Uh, there it goes, all right, cool. So your fingers crossed. And there we go. So we have Nevada and now the image displays. So you'll just wanna go ahead and go through all of your locations and then add in the image that represents whatever region that you are offering, right? So if you're in California, you might wanna put mountains. If you're uh, offering services in New York, you might wanna put a lot of buildings. And then Utah, you know, put rivers or something like that because Utah is a very scenic state. It's very beautiful. If you guys do want to come to the United States, check out Utah. You know, everyone goes to California. And guys, California, it's not the most beautiful state. It's populated, but states like Utah, Wyoming, really beautiful. You know, also Nevada, but that's there's a lot of dirt there. But, uh, you know, if you like to gamble, that's a good place to go. So uh, let's go ahead and go back to our location section. And uh, let's just go ahead and click on locations here. All right, so now you'll see that we have the image displayed there. So that's how we can add locations to our listings. All right, so now that we have the locations, the features and the categories and the tags, let's now create a listing. We'll come back to form fields a little bit later, but uh, for now, let's just click on add a new listing. Finally, right, finally. So what are we offering, right? Well, for this specific example, I'm just gonna pretend that I'm a web design agency that wants to offer services in Nevada. So I will say that this is the Daryl Web Design Agency, right? And then here we can put in some description. So this is some description. Next, we have the business tagline. So this is like the one line that represents your business. You know, like, uh, you know, every company has their own taglines, right? Like State Farm, like remember they had the people who care, right? Something like that. Just a tagline that represents your business. like. I'll just put the best of the best of the best, you know, sir, you know, like the men in black, best of the best of the best, sir. All right, and then we have the Google address. This would be the Google address for your map. So I'll put in uh, just an address here, qualify, qualify way, right? The latitude and the longitude. Uh, we'll go ahead and just, we can use this little map here to kind of navigate to different parts of this. So I'll go ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and, mess around with this really quick. Now we'll talk more about the maps and everything a little bit later, but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in a map here, right? So we are in Las Vegas. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this down and then I'll just drag it, like leave it that there like that, right? So this is just going to display to users where exactly the business is located, okay? So that's the map pin. Here we have the phone number, right? So 1-800-000-000. WhatsApp, we don't use WhatsApp too much in the United States, but I believe people in India do and other parts of the world. So you'd put your WhatsApp number there. Uh, I don't know, 888-888-888. And then for the email, just go ahead and put it in there. Your website URL. So you'll just go ahead and fill out this info, right? Your Twitter URL, the, the, the war on Twitter, you know? So here we go. If you have a Twitter account, uh, Daryl Wilson, and then Facebook, uh, let's see, Facebook, you know, Daryl, I, I have no idea. I'm just throwing, throwing content out there. But you'll want to go ahead and insert your links for your specific um, your specific social profiles, right? So your Twitter account, your websites, uh, you know, Facebook, and so on and so forth. Here we have the image gallery, right? So select the images that represent your business online. So here I'll click on Upload Images, and then we'll click on Add to Gallery, all right? Now I'm just going to use these demo images just to follow along in this video, but you guys should get your own images for your websites, right? So I'll go ahead and actually use, uh, grab this phone right here, right? These ones right here, I won't use this guy, there we go. So we have those four images, right? I held shift and shift can actually help you click on more images and then I'll click on add to gallery. Now we don't need to add a caption, so I'm not gonna add a caption and I will save those. 
So we have these four images that represent this business. We have the price status. I'll say, you know what, this is moderate, right? Usually the prices go from uh, $500 to 2000 bucks. This is good because this will help users understand the price budgets of the business. The verify listing, so we can just say that this is claimed or not claimed. Now, later in the video, we'll be talking about how users can self-claim their businesses at a price. But uh, if you choose to do it manually, you can just say, well, this is claimed. Like we already know the business or, you know, whatever. Here we have facts and facts are just more information about the actual website. Like, do you offer refunds? It's very simple. No, very simple answer. You know, very simple. Here we have the business hours, right? We can put in the business hours or we can just say, you know what? We are open 24 hours. We never sleep, right? And then we have the business logo and this is the logo that represent your business. All right, so I'll go ahead and click on insert image. I will upload the files and I'll just go ahead and drag in a logo here that I have and click on open. Now, if you guys do need an, uh, a logo, usually I recommend Fiverr, right? You guys can try Fiverr, but you guys can also try Placeit. So placeit.net is a really cool website. I'll leave this link in the description below this video. And what I like about this website is they actually create many different versions of the logo to help you guys understand like what you're looking for. And they have a really cool logo maker. So all you need to do is just kind of put in your information and then they will propagate several logos that uh, you might want to choose from. But they do have a logo maker that you guys can mess around with. So here I'll click on logos and then we have logo maker. So let's say for example, you guys are like a web agency, right? So I'll just put Daryl agency and click on next. And then these services, I'll just put, uh, we'll just do all right and click on let's go. And then here you'll see that it has already created some uh, versions for us to work with. And they do create like hundreds of them. So this site does a really good job at making a lot of different logos. But uh, I'll be making a full another video on this website and talking about the ins and outs. But uh, overall, it's a great way to get logos for your site. But uh, let's go ahead and go back over here to new listing. And once you guys insert your logo, I think we're all ready to go. So let's go ahead and scroll up here and just make sure everything's filled out correctly. And I believe that's it. So let's go ahead and click on publish and publish. Now there are also two different ways on how to display your listing. And we'll talk more about those in the theme options a little bit later, but uh, right here, let's click on view listing. All right. And here we go. We have the images that we have uploaded to the site. So we have that phone, the map, we have this other image, and then we also have the motorbike as well. Below that, we have the name of the agency and the best of the best of the best, sir, right? And then below that, we actually have the video where we can go ahead and insert a link. This is some description. So remember earlier how we had that description section? This is where the description is listed. And then right here we have, do you offer refunds? We put no. And then we have some more information, right? So we have the actual address, the phone number, the website, and then all of the social icons right here. Next, we have the price range. So here we can enter in the price range and then we can report if something's wrong. We have the admin where users can send more information to the admin about uh, whatever it is they want to talk about on your site. So this is an example of a successful listing. Users can also go ahead and click on submit review, create their own reviews, and then you can also see that this has been claimed. So that's just an example of how to create a listing for your website. Now let's say for example, people want to find this listing, right? So let's go ahead and click on this logo and then we'll click on search. If we scroll down right here, you will see that you can now see the Daryl web design agency, right? And then right here, they can click on preview and this will display some information about the actual listing. Now there's one thing that we might need to add to this listing, which is the featured image. So the featured image will be the image that represents the actual image in the search results. It's not necessarily the image that displays on the actual listing, but it's the image that represents the listing in the search results. So let's now add a featured image to our listing. So let's go back to our listing here. And under the listing section, we'll go ahead and scroll down, featured image, and then we'll set a featured image here. And uh, I'll just use, uh, we'll just use this one, the columns one, because this is very unique, right? I'll click on set featured image. 
This is the actual image. And then I'll click on update. Now let's go back to our search results here and now let's refresh the page. Cool. So now you'll see that the Daryl Web Design Agency has displayed there, and this is the image that represents the listing. Now there are some things that I do want to talk about really quickly that I ran into problems with, and I just wanna make sure that you guys don't run into the same problems. So let's go to dashboard here. So if you guys are using the Lightspeed Cache plugin, that plugin may have conflicts with this theme. So let me just give you an example here. I know many people like to use this caching plugin. In fact, I love this caching plugin, but the Lightspeed cache can cause conflict. When I was working on this specific theme, I had this installed and the featured image was not saving. And also the other images sometimes would not save on my site. So if that ever happens to you, it could be a conflict with the Lightspeed cache. This is a very popular caching plugin. So I just wanna make that very clear for people who are using this because I actually deactivated it and the problem fixed. So uh, sometimes you might have plugin conflicts with the theme. So just be mindful about that. If you guys do have any issues where something does not display, just go ahead and deactivate some of the plugins and then the image should propagate. All right, so now that we know how to create a listing, now let's talk about one more option on this listing, which is how to add more fields to this listing, right? So let's go ahead and just go back to the W here and we'll click on the Daryl Web Design Agency. Now let's say for example, people are registering on your sites and they are inputting information. However, you might wanna make an additional field that might represent this specific niche, right? So for example, web design. Well, maybe we wanna talk about, do they give free uh, invoices, right? Or free quotes. We want to make a specific section for that. So let's do that. Let's go back over here to our sites and then we'll go back to listings and now we have form fields. So this is the, the area where we're going to add in more fields to our current listing. So let's click on add a new field. And this is an example field type, right? So we can have text, we can have checkbox, whatever. Um, it just depends on what you wanna go for, right? Checkbox would just be something they check. A text box would be an area where they can go ahead and manually type in some text, right? But this will be something like uh, free quotes. And then I'll just leave this as text, right? And I'll make sure that uh, we select the agency because I only want the free quotes to apply to the agency section. Because for example, if I put the free quotes for hotels, that wouldn't make much sense, right? Because no one gives free quotes for hotels days, right? So you just wanna make sure that if you do create fields, you want to assign them to a specific category that makes more sense. And then click on publish. All right, and now we'll go back to our web design agency here. And then I'll click on edit listing. Now here is the current listing. And right away, you guys might notice that we cannot see that listing or the field. And the reason why we cannot see that field is because we need to add this to a specific category first. So on the right side, I wanna assign this to the agency section, right? Because this is an agency. And then I'll click on update. I will then refresh the page. And then I'll go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page. Once we do that, we will then see free quotes here at the bottom. And then I'll just say yes, right? And then I'll click on update and then I'll view the listing. And then we'll go ahead and scroll down here and we have the new section of additional details, free quotes, and then we have yes. So that's how you guys can create additional fields for your listings where you might want to give just a little bit more information or offer specific services for that specific category. So now that we know how to create listings, let's now talk about how to design this page and also how to design the listing page where they are displayed. For example, if I go over here to our homepage and I click on search, uh, we can also customize this page as well. So in this part of the video, I'll show you how to customize your listing page and also this page as well, which I, I guess you wanna call this like your search results, right? Makes sense. So let's go back to our dashboard over here. And then we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna see theme options. Now uh, here we have a list of options. However, if you just click on theme options, these same options display right here. I'm not sure why the theme author decided to actually create the actual um, options here. And then again, right here, 
I feel like that can be just very confusing, right? Because it just looks like a lot of options, but they're the same exact thing. So don't get overwhelmed. I was at first, right? Now, once you guys are here, you guys will see that you have a bunch of different tabs, right? So we have the general tab, the user dashboard, topography, and just other general settings that you guys can check out on your, um, you know, on your websites. But uh, before we go ahead and talk about all these options, let's just first talk about the listing and then we'll come back and we'll talk about these other options. So here we have listings, right? So click on listings and then here we have a bunch of different tabs. So we have the general listing detail and all these other general options. So right here we have listing detail, right? Now listing detail is referring to this specific page right here. One second. We'll click on this design agency. So this is the page it's referring to. So uh, the listing detail is referring to this specific page right here. Now there's different styles that you guys can choose and then you guys can also design and kind of mix and match based off of those specific styles. For example, I'll go ahead and show listing two or style two and then click on save changes. Once I do that, I'll go to our listing right here and then I'll refresh the page. And then the listing will be displayed in a different style. So now you can see how there's a bunch of different tabs where they can go ahead and see what's going on right here. So it's just a different style of how to present your specific listing. Now there is one specific style that I do wanna talk about and that is style three. Now earlier we talked about logos. Remember how we talked about business logos? And for style one, the logo does not display. However, the logo will be displayed only on style three. So right here we have style three. I'll click on save changes and then I will go ahead and go back here and I will refresh the page. All right, so now you'll see that that logo that we uploaded earlier actually displays right here. And then they just kind of pushed up the map a little bit uh, closer up here, I guess you can say. We have some other general options and then we have some description, watch video, add review. And it's just a different way on how to actually format the actual uh, listing. So this part right here, uh, we're going to talk more about how to create custom reviews, but this is where they can review it based off of stars. And we can actually add more ratings like, you know, friendliness, cleanliness, um, you know, cheap or whatever. So there are more ways on how to add more reviews. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But uh, that's just another example of how to create a style. Now let's go back over here and just do style four and then click on save changes. You guys can see also here, this is my support ticket. So I really did actually uh, find out why the logo wasn't displaying and they told me that it only displays on listing three. So that's where I was like, man, I'm uploading the logo. Why is it not displaying? So I did actually open up a support ticket and I do go back and forth with them. But uh, let's go ahead and back over here and now let's check out style four, right? There we go. So this is style four and uh, you know, it's just a different way on how to present, you know, your style or your listing. I think listing one is pretty good and I think that's why it's selected to default. So let's just change that one more time and refresh the page. And uh, there we go. All right, so now let's talk about how to actually structure this page, right? So we have reviews, we have our content here, but we can rearrange this information, right? So here we have the YouTube video. And if we look at the actual YouTube video, we can see this is the YouTube video. So I can actually take this YouTube video and put it below the content. So for example, here we have YouTube video and I will put that below the actual details, right? And then I'll click on save changes. And if I do that, this part right here will then display under the content. So let's just refresh the page to give you an example. And there you go. So now we have the description at the top and then this part is below the actual contents. So this is how you can kind of build the content layouts on your listing page. Now we have this next section right here and this is referring to the sidebar, right? So let's say for instance, you don't want to have a lead form or you want to disable specific sections. We can go ahead and do that for the actual sidebar, right? So this section here. So maybe you don't want people to actually message the actual admin or you don't want people to, uh, you know, if you, if you want to hide or show specific elements, you would just do the same thing here, right? So I'll just go ahead and just, you know, hide in some elements here, right? I do want to show the time, right? And then I'll click on save changes. 
So here you'll see that we have some specific information now disabled. So let's go back over here and we'll refresh the page. And now you'll see that nobody can actually message the admin because we have actually disabled the actual lead form right here. So uh, these other elements here, we'll talk more about these a little bit later when we create events. But uh, in general, we can disable the timings, we can disable the maps or whatever you would like to disable on your listing sites. Now, there are some other options here where we can go ahead and just add uh, you know, additional information. We can change the position, the video option. Now, this next option, you can actually disable the report button. So this will actually not allow visitors to report on your websites. So I'll turn that off. And then this is the actual detailed design offer. Once we create uh, deals and discounts, uh, it will then display in this specific format. And then you can do the same thing as well for the sidebar. So this is for the content area, and then this would be for the actual sidebar. So I'll go ahead and click on save changes here. So this is how you guys can actually design and customize your actual listing page. And you'll have to go through each specific styles because each specific style will be different, right? So for example, for Style three, uh, you'll see that you have different elements and you can kind of work with them, right? So at this point, it's just trial and error. You know, you'll just need to go through each style, pick a specific style, and then build within this content layout to kind of fit a specific criteria for your directory websites. So I'll go ahead again and I'll click on save changes. So now that we talked about the actual listing page, which was this page right here, Let's now talk about the other page, which was the uh, search page, or I guess you want to say search results page, right? So right here, you'll see that this is our current search results, but maybe most of you don't want to display the map, right? Or maybe you want to display this in a specific style and format. Let's go back to our theme options. And here we have the listing archive view, right? So the listing archive view will display your search results in a specific style. So for example, right now we have currently selected this half map. However, we might wanna change that to something like a full with top search. And then we can also adjust the listing grid. So they have various different styles on how to present your listing grid, but maybe you want to present it in something like this style right here, or you can even have it as that Groupon style, which looks pretty cool as well. But I'll just go ahead and select this one right here. And then there are some other options. Now, I actually do recommend to turn this one on. This will allow users to turn on between grid and list view. So I do want to turn that on. And then I'll click on save changes. Now let's go back over here and let's refresh the page and let's just see what's going on here. All right, so this is our current new listing page. And right here, we can go ahead and search by category. We can view this specific section on the map. So if you do want to show them on the map, you can go ahead and, and show users where they are on the map. And then we have some other general filters where they can filter by price, filter by uh, location, and if they are open now. And then here they can see a list of all of the listings that we have listed on our website. Now you guys can also mix and match. So for example, we have this heading style, right? But maybe you want to change this uh, listing grid right here to a specific style. So let's go ahead and go back to our theme options and say, you know what? I want to go ahead and, and change that to something else. You know, let's go ahead and change it to this uh, deal section and click on save changes. And then we'll go back over here and then I'll refresh the page. And now it's kind of created in this specific format where it just looks a little bit more compact, right? We have the information here of the uh, specific listing we have some tags and then we have the location and then also they can call, show it on the map and it's just a different way on how to present your listings on your directory website. So you can mix and match between these specific, um, you know, specific styles. So feel free to do that. Now I also do wanna talk about this specific layout right here and this one is a little bit more compact. So here I have listing with sidebar filters and then I went ahead and I selected this one right here, right? and then I'll click on save changes. So this one is a little bit different and I just wanted to point it out. So I have saved the changes and then let's go ahead and take a look here. So this is the current listing and I'll go ahead and just refresh the page. And you'll see here how it displays a map. However, it also has filters. Now we also have the option to actually get rid of this map right here and just keep pushing out more of the actual um, listings. 
And I just wanted to point this one out because it is a little dynamic, right? So if you do want to have this specific approach, uh, you would go ahead and enable this one right here. And then also this listing and then click on save changes. So just a, just a reminder guys, uh, you, you do want to go ahead and mix and match and just find out what works best for you for your directory website. All right, so now that we know how to adjust the listing page and also the archive page, let's talk about the actual theme options. Now, what I'm first gonna do here is I will go through these general options right here in this little page, and then we'll go ahead and talk about these options on the left side. Now, these options on the left side, they're just basically features, right? If you wanna add events, if you want to add pricing plans, also the listing pro CC, this is kind of like the general dashboard of your website. So just to give you a quick visual here, uh, you can see like the total users, the listings, the total ads, and then they also have add-ons and also a form builder, which I guess they call it a visualizer, right? But uh, it, it's a form builder and you can make custom reviews and also uh, custom forms as well. But let's just first go ahead and talk about the actual theme options. And then we'll jump into these options here on the left side. So to access the theme options, you'll go over here and click on theme options. The one thing I don't like about this theme, and I'll be very transparent, is the fact that they label the options twice everywhere. So for example, if you click on theme options, you'll see that all the options display here at the bottom, yet they're also right here on the actual uh, theme options. So I just don't know why they did that twice. They did the same thing for the listing pro CC. These options at the top right here are the same options right here. So I don't, I don't know why they did that, but uh, that's just, that's just how it is. And that's what we got to work with. But let's just first go ahead and click on the general tab. Now the general tab generally controls the uh, primary structure and color of the website. So here you'll see that we have this primary color and you can kind of see it throughout the website, right? So here we have the primary color uh, where we can see this baby blue and you guys can adjust that as well, or you can even make it transparent. You also do have the secondary color, which will be applied to link hover overs. So when you hover over specific uh, sections on the website, like right here or right here, this is the secondary color. It doesn't play that much of a big of a role on your website, so don't worry about it too much. Here you have the user signup form password field, and all this does is enable to show the password field within the signup form. And then next you have the instant signup form, and this allows users to set up their own username very quickly. And then here we have the page title. We're gonna leave that to default. Now this is important. So let's say for example, you guys are uh, selling something in a specific currency or offering a service, or you wanna accept payments in a specific currency. You'd wanna go ahead and display it right there. Uh, here you have just some custom CSS. We don't need to worry about that. And here we have auto detection, and this displays where people are at the current moment. This is actually very helpful. So. Uh, later in the video, we're going to talk about how to control your search bar, and this will actually help users search by radius. So that's actually pretty helpful. So uh, make sure that's on. And then once you're done with that, we'll click on save changes. So that's the general options. You know, they're not too critical. There are some small fields that you want to set up, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead now and click on user dashboard. So the user dashboard is controlling this specific section right here. Now your users will all get their own specific custom dashboard. So for example, if they go over here and they click on their dashboard, you can actually enable or disable specific options. So for example, if you want to disable the uh, invoices section, you can go ahead and uh, take that out because right here you can see you have invoices. However, you can always disable that. So this section right here just refers to the actual dashboard of your business uh, clients or customers or whatever you wanna call it or your, your vendors, right? So you guys can go ahead and enable or disable specific features. I'll go ahead and click on save changes. We'll come back to this a little bit later. I know I keep saying that guys, but uh, I wanna keep this very structured and not jump all over the place. I will be talking about coupons and deals a little bit later because that involves money and we'll talk about that when we uh, create payment gateways. So next we have topography and this is pretty basic. You guys just need to go ahead and click on register here and this will actually allow you to enable Google fonts and you guys can change the fonts and the weights for your fonts on your sites. So you, you guys can just kind of go through this and check it out. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna give you examples of every single one, but uh, this is where you would change the font for your website. Next, we have the header. 
So next we have the header section, and this section obviously controls the header of your actual website. So right here, we can change this into various different styles. I'll go ahead and click on this one here at the top. And then here also we have the option for a top bar. Now, depending on which menu that you pick, you might get different options. So for example, you can see how this one has a top bar, right? But we can turn that on or off just depending on how we want to approach the websites. And then you can also change the background color, the top bar as well. A fixed header is a header where basically if users decide to scroll down, the menu will follow the user. So I'll just go ahead and turn that on just to give you a quick demonstration. And then also we can go ahead and change the header background color. And then you can also adjust the color of the text and the border color as well. Here we have a header layout. So I wanna select that to on, or if you guys do not want the header layout, you guys can select that to off. And then also we have the header search, which just essentially adds a search bar to the actual header. So I'll just go ahead and turn those on just to give you guys a quick demonstration. Now here you have the logo. So this is where you're going to upload the logo of your actual logo for your websites. And then next we have the logo for the inner pages. Now the inner pages is referring to pages like your dashboard, your account, and just other pages that are not necessarily displayed on your actual website. So uh, basically like in the dashboard, on the update profile section, and generally just the archive pages. All right, so let's go ahead and back here. So you'd wanna go ahead and upload a logo. And then also we have a favicon, and this right here at the top is a favicon. So it is the logo that displays in your actual browser. So you'd wanna go ahead and upload a favicon that makes sense for your business. And then here we have the page header background image. So this is the image that is displayed on the services section. You guys can actually change this image as well by just uploading your own, right? Or you guys can just trash that and add a color if you guys choose to do that. And then here we have a choose login pop-up style where you can display the specific pop-up login on your site. So I'll just go ahead and click on save changes and just give you guys a quick little example of what I did right here because I did change a few options there. So let's go back over to our website and refresh the page. All right, so the first thing you guys probably notice here is that we have this top bar, right? So this is the top bar, right? And then next below that, we have the search. So we did add the search to the actual header. And if I scroll down here, I don't have enough space right here. Let me actually go to a different page because I don't have enough space. Uh, I'll go ahead and scroll down here. You will then see how this menu follows us. So this is an example of a fixed header. So the header kind of stays with us. Now this, to be honest, is a little bit too big. So I might want to, you know, I might want to change that and, you know, pick a different style. Now let's say, for example, we did select our uh, login pop-up style. So let me just go ahead and open up an incognito window and show you what this looks like. All right, so let's say for example, I'm a new user to the website and I want to sign in. Here, I'll click on sign in and then you'll see how this form displays. So that's what that option is referring to. You can pick up to two different styles for your sign in form. All right, so that pretty much covers the general options. So right there, I'll click on save changes. Actually, you know what? I should probably change this one. Let's, let's go with this one here. It's just a little bit more slim. Actually, let's go with that one there. That one's better and then I will save changes. So yeah, you guys might need to go through your header and just pick a few different options. Next, we have the banner section. Now this is referring to the actual homepage, right? So this is the current homepage, and this is where you can actually design the actual homepage. So for example, if you want to adjust the banner style, you can say, you know what? I wanna pick something that looks like this right here, right? And then also below that, we have the search style. So you can see here how we can pick from various different styles. I'll choose this transparent one. Here we have categories. So I'll say, you know what? Uh, I wanna go ahead and choose this one here. We can adjust the color as well, or we can make it transparent by clicking on the transparent, uh, I guess you wanna say arrow or, or whatever that is, circle. And then you can adjust the text color and stuff like that. You guys can also adjust the banner heights. And if you guys have specific images, you might want to make sure that the banner height is correct for whatever images you are uploading. And then we'll keep scrolling down here. And this is where you can adjust the banner image, which I'm sure a lot of you want to change. So I'll go ahead and click on upload here and I'll change this image. We'll go ahead and just throw in this map, select that. And I'll keep scrolling down here. So next we have courtesy listing, and this one's a little confusing. So I believe if this image is linked to a specific listing, then they can click on the banner and be redirected to that specific listing. 
I believe that's what it's referring to. But I'm not 100% sure. That was when I was just kind of like, huh? You know? So these next options are pretty important. So the banner taxonomy will display either the categories, locations, or the features within this specific box. So as of right now, you can see we only have categories here, right? But uh, if you wanna add something of locations only, you can go ahead and select locations, right? So you guys can go ahead and adjust those there. Here we have the listing categories. So these are all the categories that will be displayed or working with the actual search bar. So you can see that we have all of these different um, listing categories, and these are the options that will be available in this specific search bar, right? So the next option is the what field. So let's say, for example, you only want to display specific categories in the drop down menu. For example, by right now, you guys can see that we have all of these displayed, right? These are all displayed in the search. However, maybe you only want to display maybe agency, right? Or maybe only beauty and spa. So right here, we can do that. So I'll put agency and then I'll put beauty and spa and then click on save changes. And what this will do is that this will actually restrict the search to only have these in the drop down. So let's go over here and refresh the page. And then if I hover over what and I click, we will then see that we only have these two options here. So that's just a, you know, an option if you want to kind of navigate users to a specific region or a specific feature on your sites. And then next we have the location default text and here we have your city and you can always change that. So right here that also just says your city. And below that we have the actual search top title. This is just the title text that displays on your homepage. So this is where you would customize it. So here you have let's uncover the best places to eat and then also let's uncover the best places to eat. So that's where that text displays. And then below that we have the just looking around and this main text will display right here uh, below the search bar. So that's pretty much it for the actual banner of the home page, right? So to make those changes, just go and click on save changes and this will adjust on your actual home page. So just remember that the banner section is where you would design the actual banner. Now, one thing also guys, if you do get this warning right here, uh, just ignore it. You know, I was messing with it and sometimes it just says it, but there is real no warning. So uh, just be mindful about if you do get this notice, it's not a cause for concern. So next we have the main text and the main text is the main text of your actual um, homepage, right? So. Uh, let's say, for example, you want to say something else like uh, uh, find the best business, right? You guys can actually get rid of this if you choose not to use this. And the your city will dynamically show the city where the users are searching from. So, for example, I'll click on save changes. Now, I'm currently in Bangkok, Thailand. So as of right now, you guys can see it says explore Bangkok, right? So if the users are visiting your website from a specific location, it will pick that up and then it will display the city where they are searching from to make them feel more welcome, you know, to make them feel more inviting. Because if they're looking for a specific product or service in a city, they might want to see the city that represents them, right? So that's what the uh, actual your city is referring to. So this next section is the Google Maps where you can embed a Google Maps API. I will be giving you guys a video on how to get a Google Maps at the end of this tutorial, but it's totally optional. You don't have to do that. Here you have different map types. So you have the open streets, Google Maps, and also the map box. However, just depending on what you pick, you might need to get the API from those specific websites. So just keep that in mind. Next, we have the blog section. Now I'll go ahead and quickly touch base on a blog, but I'm not gonna dive too deep into it because blogs can take time, but I'll just show you how to create a quick blog post and then also show you where they are located. So right here, I'll go to plus new and click on post. Now this is if you wanna create blog posts for your site, and these are actually pretty good to have because these can also get picked up in the search results. So right here, I'll put in top 10 best places to, oh, 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 there we go, go in Bangkok. And then here I will throw in some of my favorite dummy text. And on the post section, I will add in a featured image. And then I'll go ahead and add in these little, uh, I guess, I don't know what those are, those lights, set a featured image. And then I'll publish this article. This is good because this might actually help users find your websites. Uh, I'll talk more about marketing at the end of the video, but that's definitely one thing that you might wanna consider is content marketing. And then this is your blog post. And if you just scroll down, 
They will then see your article, they will see who wrote it, and they can also leave comments as well. Now you can assign this blog page as well in the theme customizer. So I'll go ahead and go over here and click on customize and just show you where you can actually uh, see where your blog posts are located. So on the homepage settings, you'll see that we have the homepage set to home, right? And also the blog posts will be displayed on the blog page, right? So you guys can just go ahead and add it there. And once you guys do that, you guys can then add it to the menu as well. So my menu was not deleted. Uh, since we actually picked a different header type in the theme options, you'll now see that we have this little drop down here. And this is now where my pages are. So just depending on what header type that you guys pick, it will adjust your menu accordingly. All right, and here we go. So we have the blog page and these are our current blog posts, right? So over here in the theme options, we can choose to pick different styles. So, you know, a list view with a style too. I have no idea. Let's just, let's just gamble here. We're gonna gamble and we're gonna take a look at what this looks like. So we have number two, right? List view style two. I'll refresh this page and let's just see what happens here. I have no idea. All right, so you guys can see how this changed, right? We have this different style and this different format. Now this is a post that was created by default when we installed WordPress. So we can delete this post at any time, just like we delete pages. And then, yeah, so we have all of our posts and everything looks pretty good. Now, one thing also, you guys can get rid of this sidebar if you choose to do that. So let's go back over here and let's just change this to four grid view. And also for the blog templates, I want, actually no, for the, uh, blog templates, we'll leave that to full width, yeah. And then for the blog detail, I'll also leave that as full width as well. And yeah, so we just got rid of our sidebar. Let's save the changes and take a quick look here at what we've done. All right, cool. Wow, this is actually pretty interesting. I do like this blog post style a little bit better, right? Looks really, looks interesting, right? Look, looks modern. And if we click on the actual blog post, you'll see that this is now full width and we have gotten rid of the actual uh, sidebar on the actual blog post. So that's how you guys can design the actual blog of your website. Now, one thing to mention, if you guys do want to add a specific color or a background to this banner, you guys will need to go to edit post and then you'll add a banner. Now let's say for example, you guys just want a specific color. You will need to upload a background image that is just a specific color, but, uh, right here, I'll click on insert image. And then I'll just pick a random one. So I'll just grab this one. Uh, let's, I'll grab this one here, insert that into the post and click on update. You guys might also want to use the featured image and the banner image as the same image. Cause that might make more sense. Right. But uh, let's just go ahead and click on preview here and preview in a new tab. All right, cool. So now we have a background image for our current blog posts. Now, for those of you who are total noobs and you guys don't know how to write blog posts, which, you know, it happens, you know, a lot of the times when you're writing these blog posts, you don't even know where to start, right? I do have another video that explains how to write blog posts for complete beginners, where, you know, we start off with the title, opening, subheaders, and how much content to write. And we really go in detail and we talk about how to write blog posts. So I'll leave this video in the description below. Uh, it's using a free plugin, so it doesn't cost you guys anything at all. But uh, yeah, that's how you guys can add a blog post to your directory website. You guys still with me? You know, if you guys feel like you guys wanna take a break, feel free to take a break at any time, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep tackling each of these one by one, all right? And next we have is listing. Now we did go over all of the listings, right? So we did talk about, um, you know, the listings in general, but we do have some other options that you guys can mess around with. All right, and the next part is the general tab for listings. Now this section right here is for mobile view, right? So the best way to see how this works is simply get out your phone and then go ahead and go through the three mobile views. So they have responsive view, app view, and app view two. Now on your phone, you will see that uh, you will have a header image that displays and here you can adjust the image for that specific header. So I do like how this theme is mobile responsive and how they have different views for specific mobile devices. So that's pretty cool. Here you have home page for app view. I would just leave this blank, but uh, if you guys do not have, if you want to have a specific home page for mobile users, you guys can go ahead and select it there. But by default, it will go ahead and select the main uh, home page on your site. So if you want to have different uh, home pages for specific mobile devices, you can go ahead and add it there. And then here is the latitude and the lot longitude like we talked about earlier. You guys don't have to enter in anything there. It's not really that important. 
uh, listing order by date or you know whatever you want to set it by, right? And then here we have listing order. Now, these will actually appear on the search results. So if you want them to appear, uh, I guess you wanna say ascendedly or descendedly, you would go ahead and select that. But I think most of you select it with ACS, which is basically saying the newer ones will appear at the top and the older ones will appear at the bottom for descending, right? So that's what that means. Uh, let's go ahead and keep scrolling down here. Add listing only by logged in users. So only logged in users can submit listings. If you wanna add that, you can turn that on. If not, no problem. Here you have the contact support page. Uh, a lot of these options, I'll be very honest, are not that important because we can simply make our own contact page. We don't have to use the theme customizer options, but that is up to you. Now here, this actually is a very important option. This is the change plan button. So later in the video, we will be creating memberships and plans. And if you choose to have this enabled, the users can upgrade or downgrade their plan via their dashboard, all right? So we'll come back to that at the end of the video when we talk about uh, packages and plans and stuff like that. But this is where you can adjust that. Listing per page, you guys can select listing per page. And this is a placeholder image. So if you don't have a, a featured image like I showed you guys earlier, this is the default image that will display. So you might wanna change this, right? Cause that looks really, looks really generic, you know, it looks really uh, like you made a mistake there. So just go ahead and put in uh, an image there that uh, would be a placeholder. And then here we have some other options like the uh, map pin image for the contact us and listing page. This is the image that, I'm sorry, the icon that will display at the uh, contact page on the map section. So let's go over here to the contact and there we go. So now you'll see that we have this little um, icon right there. So that's basically what that's referring to. Now this next option guys is a slider type. I have no idea where th what this is to be honest. There's three different styles, but I even went to their documentation and they don't even have it listed anywhere on their documentation. So I'm sure it applies somewhere, but I just don't know where this slider type is being applied because the actual homepage is not a slider. So it might display somewhere on your website. And if you guys do wanna know, you guys can email them and ask them, but I was just completely stumped guys. I, I, I don't know, it's not on their documentation. I don't know where it is. So they might need to update their documentation and find out uh, what that's referring to. And then these are other, just some general options where you can enable or turn on or off, all right? So let's go ahead and click on save changes and keep working. We are progressing here. You know, the slider type, if you guys wanna let me know what that is in the comments below, feel free to let me know, but I'm completely stumped. Now we do also have the listing detail, which we talked about, the archive view, which we talked about. And here we have the submit, the listing submit and edits. So this is basically where you can design and customize the submit form. So let's go ahead and give you guys a quick example here. So right here, I'll click on add listing. I'll go ahead and close these tabs. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly select a plan because um, we'll talk we'll talk about the plans in a little bit, but this is the form that they are referring to, right? So if you wanna adjust this specific page, this is where you're going to do it. Now they do have some different styles, right? They have style one, style two, right? And I think this one here, it doesn't have a, um, I guess they have like a, a sticky on the right side. So this one does not have the sticky. It just basically shows the entire form in a really clean format, I do like it. Now, if I refresh this page really quick, let's go ahead and refresh it. You will then see that on the right side, we now have this sticky, right? So this kind of helps the user navigate what's to work on. So here we have categories and it dynamically updates. So here it's saying, you know, you need to add your business hours. So I do like this as well. I think they're both good. This one's just a little bit longer. So it, it takes a little bit longer to scroll down. So those are two different styles on how to design your submit your listing page. And then also we just have some general options here. You guys can read these and just understand what they are. Like, do you want to allow business logos, um, gallery image file sizes? You guys can turn these on or off, a default logo and so on and so forth. So I'm not gonna go through every single option here, but they're just images for your specific uh, listing page. So yeah, you guys will just go ahead and fill this information out. It is a lot of options, you know, it is quite a lot of options, but I think if you guys just read this, you guys can understand what these are because I'm not gonna go through every single little option because uh, this tutorial could easily get, uh, you know, to like five or six hours or something like that. But uh, let's go ahead and keep pushing here. Let's keep going. So let's go ahead and change this back to style one, all right? And let's go over here to the location.
Now, location is important to have this auto location. So when users visit your website, the Google uh, Chrome browser will go ahead and automatically find out where they are and it will recommend specific services based off of their location. So make sure you have this selected to auto. Okay. And let's go ahead and scroll down. So here we have reviews, which are uh, reviews on the sites. You can turn those on or off. And then we also have a lead form. And this is just a form on the contact page, which will just allow users to enter in their contact information. Uh, listing claim. So this is referring to the actual listings. So let's say, for example, you have the listings. You can add the feature to have users claim those specific listings. So uh, usually right here, it would say claim, right? I think on the Dural agency we created, it actually had the claim, right? I think I put that on there. Let's go see if we can, we can find it there, right? There we go, this one here. So you see it has that little check mark, right? So this is the claim feature and you can turn this on or off. And if you guys do turn it on or off, you guys can add different options to that uh, claim and you, know, you can add a, a top form image or whatever you want. Uh, listing nearby. This is where you can actually change the distance from where the users are searching from. And I know in Europe and the other parts of the world, you guys use kilometers. Uh, United States uses miles. And we got this in, we got this debate here. I, I think the reason why United States uses miles and they use that system is because the United States is very, very large, right? But but then again, China does use uh, kilometers as well. So I don't know, that's a, that's a whole nother debate for another video. But uh, you can actually set the distance by location. So you can go ahead and say, well, you know, we want you to search within 100 kilometers and then they would display the listings within 100 kilometers. All right. And then you guys can also embed Google AdSense. Now I do have another video that shows you how to add Google AdSense and you guys can, uh, you know, add your AdSense code here. I will leave that AdSense video in the description below of this video and this will allow ads to appear on your directory website. All right, so let's keep pushing here. Next, we have the author. So let's say, for example, you want to design and customize the author box. So here we have the blog post, and I'll click on admin. Now, the admin will also, I'm sorry, the user will also be displayed on listings if you have that enabled. So this is what they're referring to, this specific page here. And on the author archive, you guys can go ahead and design like the about me. You guys can add in specific photos, contact information, and whatever other information you want on the author archive, okay? So this is the author archive. Um, so yeah, you guys can customize that. I'm not gonna go through every option, guys. You guys can kind of just get an understanding of how to design this page using the author archive. If this banner image doesn't show up sometimes, guys, just re-upload it, because you can see right here how it's not uploading. It's out of my control. You know, I really don't know uh, why it does not display sometimes, but uh, you guys can just go ahead and re-upload it and it should work with no problem. All right, pricing plan. We're uh, well. We don't need to skip this, but uh, these are the options for the pricing plan, and we'll talk more about pricing plans at the end of the video. So the advanced filter will be displayed on your actual search page. So let me go ahead and just scroll back here and just give you a quick little example. All right, I'll go ahead and click on search, and depending on the specific layouts, you can see that we have specific filters, right? So you can turn these on or off just depending on uh, what you want to do. So you can turn off the open time or take out the highest rated or whatever you want to, you know, turn on or off and stuff like that. Next, we have the search. So the search will actually refer to the actual search bar on your homepage. And here you can see how we can change the text. So this says what field, right? This is the what field. So we can turn that on or off. Uh, you can also get a little bit more uh, detailed on your search. So do you want to have an exact match or a broad match? Uh, here we have the where field. You can turn this on or off. So let's say, for example, you guys just want like a one, just like a one bar, right? You guys can turn that, uh, you know, make it one bar if you choose to do that. And then there's just some other general options for your search bar page. I think some people like to have that one very big like search bar, right? It just depends on really what you're going for. But uh, yeah, here we have payments. So these are the general options for your payments where you can enable listings to sell. You can offer recurring payments and that's for people who maybe are on a membership plan. And here you have auto uh, recurring payments. Um, you can change the currency. You know, I don't know why this is an option. Like who puts the currency in the back of the dollar or the back of the, the the number you know maybe there is some country out there that does that but i haven't seen it yet and then here are just some other general options like you know the checkout page 
which these are all self-propagated by the theme, so you don't have to create your own. So this is all automated, but if you guys choose to create a new page, you guys can always create a new page and then add that new page as your new checkout page. So next we have coupons. Now, I'm a little confused here. Enable, disable on checkout. So I believe that if you have this on, you disable coupons. If you have it off, I believe you allow coupons, but just go ahead and test that and see, see how that works out for you. And then here we have the set invoice start. Um, this will allow custom invoices numbering. You wanna go that route? Sure, why not? But uh, let's click on save changes here and let's keep going here. So these are the general payments and uh, we'll again, we'll come back to payments and money and memberships at the end of the video. Next we have the uh, email management. So you might want to put your email here. Now I did some test transactions and um, you, you're gonna wanna go ahead and change this because when users uh, pay for listings, they're going to see this information. So make sure you add in your company name and also that you add in your email here so users know it's coming from your website. Now you guys can also adjust this specific text if you choose to do that. This is content for new user notification. So when users sign up for your website for the very first time, they will receive this welcome email from your websites. And uh, yeah, so this is the subject for new user notifications and then also content for new user admin notifications. So this is referring to just admins, okay? And now we have the listing subject type. So when users list stuff on your websites, they will then get this notification in their email. You guys can go ahead and change this to whatever you like. Uh, here you can see that uh, they added in this little form where it would be your logo, it has your listing, and then it has your website name, listing title, which is the title of their listing, and then some, just some other general information, right? And then here you have the new listing submission for admins, right? So this is for just general users and these are for admins. So I guess they made them for both, right? If you wanna have them for admins and uh, visitors, it goes to both, right? And then here you just have some other general options. So just go ahead and go through all these emails and you guys can update these. There are quite a bit, but now that I told you guys what they are, you guys can kind of update those to, you know, fit the style and the niche of your directory website. All right, let's keep going here. We're almost done with the general options, guys. We're almost done, all right? Keep, just push through, push through. Here we have the privacy page. Now, if you guys do wanna have a privacy policy, you guys will go ahead and need to add a page and then you can assign that as your privacy page, okay? And then we have some other general options. So for example, sign up, right? So they must agree to the privacy policy during sign up. it's pretty important. You guys can also make them, uh, I guess, check it when they are listing submissions and also uh, when they are reviewing the submissions as well. Uh, lead forms, claim listings. You might not wanna add it on every single one because that, that could just get very tedious and just very annoying, right? Kind of spammy almost. All right, so that is the privacy policy. Here we have the invoice. Now this is where you're gonna wanna upload your company logo and you're going to want to uh, change all this information to your company. So this would be an invoice when someone pays for something on your website so they can use that for their tax purpose or they can give that to their accountants or you know just for their general records. Here we have advertisements. And again, we'll come to ads and pricing and payments at the end of this video. But uh, these are essentially just uh, ads that you can add on your websites. Form reCAPTCHA. If you guys do decide to have the reCAPTCHA form on your website, you guys will need to create a Google reCAPTCHA form and you guys will need to go get your own API key. But uh, for now, I'm just going to have this off because I'm not gonna go through Google reCAPTCHA. I don't want to take this tutorial and lead it onto a different part like you know dev work and Google reCAPTCHA because I really wanna stay on focus on this tutorial, guys. So uh, this is, I'll, I'll save this for another video basically, all right? So let's keep going down here. URL configuration. So these are just the default URLs that will be displayed in your permalinks. So for example, if I click on search, uh, you guys will see that we have like, uh, here I'll go ahead and, and click on Washington or something. You'll see that we have these permalinks up here like location, right? You guys can always go ahead and readjust these permalinks if you choose to do that. But I wouldn't do that because a lot of these are set to pretty much standard permalink settings. All right, so I'll click on save changes here. And then we have the contact page. Now the contact page is a little funny, I'll, I'll admit, right? So let's go over here and go visit our contact page. So for this contact page, you guys can actually hide or add specific information, right? So uh, you can change your address here, you can change your phone, 
You can adjust the email. So this is the information that's being propagated on your contact page. And then you guys can enter your Facebook URLs and stuff like that. But um, I mean, this is kind of an old school information contact page because you guys can just go ahead and create your own page and use Elementor instead of using this default theme setting. So I think in the future, they may even uh, depreciate this because if you're using a page builder, you don't need to have the theme create a contact form for you. But hey, you know, if you guys choose to use it, you guys can use their contact form or you guys can create your own contact form by going to plus new page and then making your own contact form on your uh, you know directory websites. All right, so that is the contact form. Next, we have the footer settings. And this is where you guys can adjust and change your footer on your website. So for example, here, we can see that we have this footer. Um, you guys can pick different formats, right? So we can go ahead and say, you know what? I wanna pick this format here. And then you can adjust the number of columns, right? So we can have like one column, two columns, it looks like they skipped five columns, huh? That's weird. We have one, two, three, four, and six. It's very interesting. You guys can also change the background color and then also enter your uh, social URLs right there, all right, and your footer logo. Make sure you guys enter in your information. So for example, here, I put in Daryl Wilson here, right, as the uh, theme author information. And you guys can go ahead and just fill out all the information for your company so it can appear on your footer. Let's go ahead and click on Save Changes and then I'll refresh the page. Now the footer on this theme, I'll be very honest, is a little funny. You know, at times I feel like it works well and other times I feel like it does not work well. For example, I did have issues with this one right here where I tried to use this and it just doesn't display well, but I think we can find a fix for that. So you'll see here at the bottom, it kind of disappears, right? So let's go ahead and turn on customize. So we might need to add widgets for those specific uh, footers, right? So let's go ahead and scroll down here and we'll turn on widgets. So here we have the footer area one, two, three, and four, right? So we can turn this on, or I guess click on it, and then we'll add a block, right? So here we can add in, um, you know, an image, right? Just a quick one here, you know, just a quick little image, select it. And then there we go. So we have our image here at the bottom, uh, but I might wanna make this a little bit smaller, right? And below that, we can add a new text block, right? So this would be like about our company, right? So let's get a paragraph here. And this is some demo contents. Let's just see what that's happened. All right, so we got some, we got some content right there, right? Let's go ahead and scroll back here. Let's go to the second one. The second one, we can click on browse all and we can find something else, right? I think we have pages, right? I think we have pages, a page list. Throw page list in there, see what that does. All right, cool, we got page list, right? And then we can go to number three, and here we can add in something else. I don't know, maybe do they have listings, right? I think they have listings, right? Add listings. They have their own custom widgets here, you know? Let's go ahead and see what happens here. Very nice, ooh, I do like those. That looks really nice. And then maybe on four, uh, I don't know. Do we have a contact form or something? Listing Pro contact form. Let's, let's take a look at that one. I have no idea, guys. I've never seen this one before. If it works. Oh, that looks really nice. I do like that. I do like that. So you guys can go ahead and add widgets above these. You know, you can you can move them around, you know, by going over here. Uh, let's see, move block. Move to, no, I thought you guys can move blocks, right? Or is it drag and drop? No, it's not drag and drop. All right, well, you have to, you know, you gotta, you guys gotta mess around with this, you know, but uh, this is where you can design and customize your footer. So feel free to add in the elements first. And once you guys do that, then you guys can go ahead and adjust these to your liking. So that's how you guys can create a footer. When I first used the footer, I was a little confused, but uh, just go through these different options and it will format your footer to a specific style. Whew. All right, guys. Well, congrats. We actually went through all of the, the theme options here. So we went through all the general, the user, the dashboard. So at this point, I think you guys are getting a little bit more warmer on how to use this theme. Uh, these options all refer to different parts of the websites, and you'll just have to adjust these settings accordingly to just kind of fit whatever style you want for your directory websites. So now that we talked about these general options, let's move on to this next section and talk about uh, the other options like claims, events, and also how to uh, create a review form and also how to create a custom uh, form, I guess you wanna say form builder, right? So for example, you know, we're first gonna go ahead and start with the review section, right? We're gonna build a, a review section. So here you'll see that we have this one, right? But we only have one, you know, one review. 
What happens if you wanna add multiple reviews, right? For like cleanliness or for price or for something like that to make your site more efficient. Let's go ahead now and talk about how to create a custom review form for your listings. All right, so on the left side, you're gonna see listing pro CC and then you'll see your dashboard, right? So earlier in the video, we did talk about these settings where we saw the add-ons, uh, the visualizer, and also the license code. So this right here is the uh, rating form builder. I wish they would give it a better name, right? I mean, visualizer, it's, you know, it's kind of not, 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 it's not explanatory, right? But uh, right here, we'll just go ahead and check this. And then I'll click on edit. Now you can see right here from the visual how we can create specific reviews for the form, right? So on the right side, we have the global criteria, and then we also have category specific criteria. So this just means if you want this to apply on your entire website, or if you wanna create specific categories for that review. For example, hotels would not have the same reviews as restaurants, right? They might have different restaurants, like you know the, um, the waiting time, right? Or something like that. So that's why you'd wanna create specific reviews. But uh, right here, we have the global criteria. Let's click on edit. Now, right here, we have cleanliness, service, ambience, and price. So we can go ahead and add in our own, right? So here, I'll put in like a, you know, waiting time or something. We'll put in friendly, friendly. And then I'll click on add, and then I'll save it. So these are the global criteria, right? So these are going to apply on all of the categories regardless. So I'll refresh the page and open this up. And now you'll see that we have the friendly category open. Now, you might wanna create specific reviews for specific uh, categories, right? Because for example, uh, waiting time will probably apply to restaurants, but it will not apply to hotels, right? So here is the category group that we have uh, created, right? So we did create agency, but you guys can create as many groups as you want, right? But uh, I'll just go ahead and select, uh, we'll select agency. So this is referring to the actual, um, remember how we created the agency for the web design business? So here I'll click on edit. And now we can add reviews for the agency. So I'll put price, right? Price, uh, quality, and then speed, right? Maybe we don't need to put a question mark, right? Maybe we can take that out or I don't know, whatever. You guys get it. I'll click on save. And now what we can do is find the agency, right? So this is not the agency. So regardless, if I refresh the page, this will not change, right? This is gonna stay the same because this is referring to the luxury art club. So let's go ahead and find the agency here, the one that we created earlier. I'll go ahead and scroll down. And it is, where is it, where is it, where is it? There it is, all right, so agency. Let's go ahead and click on this. All right, and then we'll scroll down. And if I open this, we will then see we have price, speed, and quality. So this is how you guys can create specific uh, reviews for specific categories for your directory websites. So that is the uh, builder, right? the visualizer, I guess. So that's the multi-criteria rating. Now we have the FEC form builder. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Now, one thing to note, guys, when you turn these on, these start applying to your website immediately, okay? So just by having this on, everything has changed. So if I turn this off, all of the reviews will turn off, okay? So right here, I'll click on edit. So this is the FEC form builder, and this is the form that you can build that will display on your actual uh, submit your listing. So when someone clicks on add a listing and they submit their listing, you guys can create custom fields for specific uh, areas or categories. So for example, here we have listing title, right? Full direction, or sorry, full address and the city. And the same thing, listing title, full address, and then the city. So here we have all of these sections, right? So we have primary listing details, we have category and services, right? So if we scroll down here, category and services, and then the next one would be price details. So essentially right here, we're just building our form. Now, before we go ahead and design this a little bit, we need to first create the custom field for this specific section. So on the left side, you're going to see uh, listings. You'll go ahead and click on form fields. We have to kind of go back here and I'm gonna click on add a new field. So this would be the field for our form builder. I know they kind of moved it around. I'm not sure why they did that, but uh, I'm just showing you guys how this works. So we can go ahead and add in a new specific section here. Um, instead of websites, I don't know, maybe we can put in like a YouTube channel, right? So uh, YouTube, YouTube, oh my goodness, I cannot spell. 
<laughs> there we go. So YouTube channel, right? And we can have this as a text, a checkbox, or whatever, right? I'll just leave this as a text, okay? And we can assign this to specific categories as well, right? So um, I'll just go ahead and select all of them, but you guys can exclude them from specific categories, right? So you can say, well, I want it for this one, this one, or you can just exclude it from categories altogether. It's really up to you. But I'll go ahead and select all of them and then click on publish. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and go back to the actual visualizer, so they call it, right? And go to the FEC builder. And now over here under custom fields, uh, we will now see that we have a YouTube channel, right? So now I can go ahead and drag this and just put it right there, right? YouTube channel. And then here you can see how we can add a label to it and also a placeholder, you know? So YouTube or YouTube channel. This is the placeholder text. So this is just the text that's going to appear uh, on the actual form, right? So I'll go ahead and go back over here and we will refresh the page. All right, so I refresh the page and we need to first select a category. So that's why it's not displaying. So when we select a category, then it will display because remember how we applied that only to specific categories. So then now that I selected agency, now you'll see that YouTube channel has displayed. If you guys do want it to display by default, you guys just will need to go ahead and just say, I don't want this form to be associated with any categories and it will be displayed for all of the forms, right? So uh, let me just go ahead and just show you guys really quick here. Let's go back to listings, form fields, and we can edit this right here. And I'll just say exclusive from categories. So uh, now it's just gonna appear by default. So they don't have to select a specific category. I'll refresh the page. And there you go. So it says YouTube channel, and then there it is, right? And then you can add the placeholder text there or whatever. So uh, that's how we can kind of build the form by a custom field. Now we also have categories, right? So we have primary listing details, then we also have category and services. So let's go back over here to the visualizer really quick and just show you how you guys can uh, add your own fields or whatever. So for example, we have category and services. So we can add in a new field, right? and we can put in something else. Uh, I don't know, uh, services. Uh, I'll just exclude this from all categories, so it'll display by default. And the field label, I'll just put friendly. Uh, I'll go ahead and click on save, right? And if I go back over here and I refresh the page, uh, you will then see that the friendly will display right there, right? So that's how we can add in more uh, fields to those specific uh, categories. Now, let's say, for example, you wanna add a whole new section, kind of like what they've done right here, you know? Uh, let's go ahead and scroll down right here. And here we can just click on add a new section, right? So I'll put uh, free breakfast, you know? And then I will uh, click on save. So there we go, we've added a new category, but now we need to create a field for that category. So uh, right here, I'll just, we'll have a checkbox breakfast and I'll click on save. All right, so now we have breakfast and that would be like a check mark, right? So I'll go over here and refresh the page and then I'll scroll down and then users will be allowed to check a free breakfast or something like that. So I'm just showing you guys how you guys can add in more custom fields to your form. And then here you guys can just go ahead and you know disable sections or you can add new fields to those specific sections. Also, if you wanna change the name, you would just click on the pencil and then just put like a, you know, social or something like that, right? That makes more sense. And then, uh, yeah, just go ahead and click on save and then you're all set. All right, so at this point we have finished the Listing Pro CC Builder. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next section and talk about events, reviews, claims, and appointments. All right, guys, in this part of the video, I'll be explaining the different uh, features like events, reviews, claims, and also appointments on your uh, directory website. So let's go ahead and go to the dashboard and tackle one at a time. Now let's first go ahead and talk about events. Now, if you wanna hold events on your directory website or allow users to have events, let me quickly go ahead and show you guys how to create events. So right here, you guys can see I already created event one, but let's just go ahead and add a new event. Now these are ideal if you wanna create like a big event, like a meetup or something like that. But here I'll just do like a you know, morning coffee meetup, right? Something like that. And then this will be description about the event, you know? So this is an event for coffee, whatever. Whoa, 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 there we go. Event for coffee, right, makes sense. 
Now you need to select the listing. So you need to first create the listing and then attach that listing to the event. Uh, I'll just go ahead and put in the agency one, right? Or let me see here. Do I have the agency, the Daryl agency? Or, uh, all right, we're just gonna grab in uh, this one. I don't know, the core wellness <laughs> chiropractic. And then you'll select the date, right? So what day is this? Well, I'll just say this is January 2nd, 2022. And then here I'll put, uh, this starts at 8 a.m., right, for a coffee meetup. Here we can put the end date as well and also the end time if you choose to have one. For the location, you guys can just go ahead and type it in here. So I'll put, uh, you know, I don't know, all uh, Pi Way. We don't need to worry about the Google Maps. I'll show you guys how to embed it at the end, but uh, you guys don't need it. And then also, if you guys do want people to purchase tickets for this event, this is where you can per, uh, put the URL. Now you guys can use like eventbrite.com or just some website that generates coupons, or I'm sorry, tickets for your current events. Once you guys have done that, we can also set a featured image, right? And uh, here I'll just put in like this guy, you know? It looks, it looks happy, right? And then I'll click on publish. All right, now let's go ahead and go back to our website here. And let's turn on the page builder. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down and we're first gonna look for the events, right? So we have events calendar and also events. So here I'll just drag in the events and then you'll see that the events will be displayed here. So it has the actual uh, dates, it has the time and also the address. So what we can do is update this and then we can just view the page. So you guys will see, it says that it's hosted by this specific listing, right? And users can say that they're going and attend it, and this will actually display in their dashboard. So I'll just say, yeah, I'm going, cool, you know? And then they have the address there. Uh, we have all of the stats for the actual, um, you know, for the event. So here we have the attendees, and also this is an event for coffee. So it makes sense, right? So that's how you guys can create events for your specific um, you know, event. So let's go ahead now and talk about the next one, which is the reviews. So here I'll scroll down and we can actually create our own reviews. Now, if I click on all reviews, these reviews will be posted here when people submit reviews on your website. However, you guys can create your own reviews or fake reviews or whatever you want to do on your directory website. So right here, I'll click on add a review. And this would just be like the title, like great place. I love this place. And then here you guys can uh, upload the gallery. So if you want to show images um, from that specific review, you can go ahead and add it there. So I'll just throw in these three here. Okay. And now you need to assign this listing. So uh, you'll go ahead and put in a listing here. So I'll just type in, uh, there we go, Daryl Web Agency. And then you can also reply. So like, uh, oh my God, great, right? And then you'll click on publish. So what we're doing right here, guys, is we're just creating our own listings. And yeah, this might be a little, you know, little deceitful because we're creating our own reviews, but uh, maybe you actually did visit that place and you do want to create your own review. So let's go ahead and look for the Daryl uh, agency here because we just made a review for it, right? Let's go ahead and find it really quick. There we go. All right, and then we'll go ahead and click on reviews. And now you'll see that the person has created the review right here. So great place, blah, 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 blah. And then we have the images and then people can love it, like it and stuff like that. And then the owner response can be like, oh my God, great. <laughs> you know, So you can kind of pose as somebody else and then have an owner response, but uh, make sure you create a new user because it looks here like the admin, uh, it's pretty obvious that we, we uh, created our own review so you can make your own users and then you know have them review on your own listings. And what this does is that it shows engagement on your website. So you might need to do this a few times just to get the ball rolling, you know, because people don't like to review on empty review forms. So if they see people already reviewing an agency or a service, they might be more inclined to add reviews themselves. So now that we talked about that, let's go ahead and talk about the next one, which is claims. All right, so over here, we're gonna go ahead and find it. So there is the claims right here, and I'll click on all claims. Now, when someone claims uh, something on your business, it will be displayed here. Now, for example, I'll go ahead and go to our listings here, and I will refresh this page or search. 
And you can see that many of these businesses are unclaimed. We have one that is claimed here, uh, but this one's unclaimed. Now, usually your visitors can go ahead and just uh, claim this uh, business on their own by going down here and they can claim this. Once they actually fill this out, you can go ahead and approve the actual claim, right? Now, remember this information right here, this is all um, edited or you guys can edit all this in the general options, okay? But I'll, I'll just go ahead and put in some information here just to kind of show you guys how the claim system works, right? And this is my business. And then I will claim the business now. All right, and then I'll return to the dashboard. From here, you guys can go back over here and refresh the page. And now you'll see that someone has claimed this, right? So they can go ahead and say, all right, well, you know what? Uh, or actually, no, here, edit that. I thought I was on a quick edit, but no. So then right here, you'll just have to go ahead and change this to approved. And then that person will then go ahead and be the person or the claimer for that specific business, right? So here is the business. After we have updated it, I'll refresh the page. And now you'll see how this is claimed by the individual. So that's how uh, users can claim businesses. Now there's also this add new claim. And guys, I'll be very honest. I don't think this works well at all. I have tried it um, you know, quite a few times. And I think the easiest way to manually claim something if users cannot claim on the website is just to say that it's claimed, right? So let me just give you a quick example here just so we're on the same page. I'll go ahead and open up this one. And let's say someone emails you and says, hey man, this is my business and I really want to claim it. However, you have taken off the claim on your sidebar. What you can do to make sure that this is claimed is click on edit list. And then you can scroll down here and just say it's claimed, right? And then click on update. The only drawback of doing this is that uh, you don't know who's claiming it, right? So you can go ahead and add new claim after that happens just so that they know who the person is claiming it. Right, so I think that's why they created the claims, right? They didn't do it necessarily to actually claim it, but uh, if you do want to get more information about the author saying, okay, we approved that specific listing, right? We approved this, so who did it, right? Well, we'll just say that this is the claimer, and then we'll just say that this is Daryl Wilson or you know, Patty Wilson who claimed it. And this is for internal records. You know, This is not necessarily for users on the website. This is just so that uh, people know on your site or, you know, whoever's using your website, they just know that who the person is, right? And then you'll just click on publish. And that's pretty much it. So that's, or, whoa, 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 whoa. Man, I am spelling wrong today, guys, I swear. Maybe it's the coffee, you know, I had two Starbucks today and maybe that's it, you know, I'm not sure. But uh, that's how you guys can uh, add claimants, right? Claimants to your uh, directory website. So here's an example of a booking, right? So this is sauce and barrel, right? And if we scroll down, we can see that all the timings are open 24 hours and people can book, right? So they can book based off of day and also time as well. So let me go ahead and show you guys how to add this to your directory website if you guys choose to have bookings on your website. So let's first go over here to dashboard. And what we're gonna do is we are going to first go to listing pro CC and go to the uh, dashboard. From here, you'll click on add-ons. And now we're going to enable the appointments, All right? So just make sure that is currently uh, enabled, right? All right, so once we add the appointments, we need to then go to the pricing plans here and I'll click on pricing plans. Now you guys will need to create your pricing plans later, but uh, let's just use this free one for now. Let's just, you just use one just for now. We'll talk about this later. And all I want to do is make sure that appointments is on, right? And I do want it to show, okay? So that's just one thing to make sure that is on if you decide to accept appointments on your sites. Now let's go ahead and go over here to theme options and let's go to general first. From the general tab, we're gonna make sure we select listings, right? And let's click on listing details. Now we do wanna make sure that the actual uh, bookings, um, I guess you say widget is on the sidebar, right? So for example, here we have the appointments. You see that? So we have to put the appointments there. You guys can also drag it and put it on the actual, um, you know, up here if you guys choose to do that. Or actually, can we? No, I don't think we can. No, 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 we can't. So it just goes on the sidebar, all right? So sad. But uh, yeah, so that is the appointments. And this will appear once you have that extension enabled. Once you guys do that, you'll click on save changes. Now we're not done yet, we're almost done. I thought that was the last step, but there is one more thing that we need to do. 
Now, the people who are creating the listings, they will need to enable booking appointments in their dashboard. If they do not enable booking appointments, then the form will not display. For example, let's just click on one of these uh, one of these listings right here, right? And we scroll down and we can see like, hey man, what's up with this? Like, there is no uh, no way to booking, right? Even though it's open right now, and you know, why can't we book? It's because the actual person who created the listing needs to enable uh, the booking appointment options in their dashboard. So let's do that. Here, I'll go to dashboard. All right, now once you guys are here, you guys will then go down to the appointment section right here and click on that. You will then say, I want to start accepting appointments. So right here, I'll click on start now. Now you need to select the, the time duration for each appointment, right? So I'll say, well, you know what? Uh, I guess every appointment's 30 minutes, right? And here you'll say, well, which listings that I created do want to accept bookings, right? So we have Sauce and Barrel that's accepting uh, bookings, but uh, you'll go ahead and select the listing that the person created. So uh, we, what we can do maybe is just use, uh, we can use this one right here, the Daryl Web Design Agency. So we'll add bookings for our web design agency, right? So let's go back to the uh, dashboard and we're going to enter in the Daryl Web Design Agency, right? And click on plus and then save. Now there is one thing that you need to take into consideration. You need to make sure that the opening hours are available when that person is trying to book. So for example, right here, it's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. If the person tries to book outside of the hours, it will just not display. Okay, so just keep that in mind. But uh, we have now selected that booking and I will refresh the page. And now you'll see that we have the book an appointment now. And now you'll see that we can go ahead and select the booking, right? So the person can book anywhere between nine o'clock to 5 p.m. because that's when it is open. So what we can do is just go ahead and click on one. And then here they can go ahead and fill out their information. So I'll put uh, Daryl Wilson, All right? Yes. And then I'll click on book it. And then awesome job. They have then received the booking and then we will notify them once they have approved the booking. Let's go back over here to our sites, refresh the page. All right, awesome. So now you guys can see that we now have a booking, right? So someone has tried to book on the websites and we can go ahead and approve this. Now, once we do this, they will automatically get an email notifying them that they have gotten an approved booking and then the meeting will be set. So hopefully that makes sense, right? So now we have a approved booking and I believe this one right here, uh, actually I actually know what that does. Yeah, that's just some weird stuff. I don't know what that does. But uh, yeah, so that's how users can allow bookings for their uh, listings. All right, guys, so before I go on any further, I just wanna have a quick overview about some of the stuff that we've done and just some general options to consider and check out. Now, let's first talk about uh, how it's to design everything, right? So you guys know how to use the page builder. So just remember that this specific part is being controlled by the WordPress theme. And then the other parts of the websites are being controlled by the actual page builder. You guys can add as many pages as you want to your websites and you guys have no restrictions on that at all. So here on my header, you guys can see I have all my pages here. So just remember if you want to adjust the header, this is done through the theme options of the actual theme, right? So let me just go ahead and just quickly go ahead and just touch base on some options here. So just remember if you want to adjust like the header, right? You have the header right here and then also you have the uh, banner and this is reflecting the actual homepage of the actual website. Cause I think when people first use this theme, they do get a little confused at times. Now let's also talk about roles and users. So when people register on your website, they will be listed under the user section right here. And you guys can actually see the listings. And if they are creating blog posts, you will also see the list of posts that they have created. Now, when users sign up on your website, they will all be listed here. You guys can also create your own users and then assign those users to specific listings on your website as well. So just keep in mind, this is where your users will be displayed. So just remember that this is where you can view all of your users. They can adjust their password. If users have forgotten their password, you can go ahead and click on edits and then send them a new password that will go directly to the email address that they have registered. You can also see their listings and their posts. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you just have password problems, this is where you can adjust it. Next, I wanna talk about demo content. If you guys want to switch between demos, what we'll do is you'll go down to appearance and then click on setup wizard. 
And this is where you guys can access the setup wizard again. So if you guys wanna change the scheme of your website, this is where you're going to do it at. A lot of users get confused on where it's located and it's just located in the appearance in the theme section. But uh, right here, I'll just go ahead and import a new uh, demo website. So I'll just say yes. And right now I have classic, right? But I can switch between the restaurant pro, right? So I'll go ahead and switch between restaurant pro. I'll click on accept and then I'll import the content. All right, so now you guys can see how we have a new website, right? So we have a new style where it's just showing specific locations and it's just a different scheme, right? So it's just a different style. Now, one thing to note guys is that uh, your listings will be saved. So if you guys do decide to switch from different demos, don't worry about your blog posts and also your listings, they will be saved in the database. So uh, that is a question I get quite often about switching from demo content. Uh, you will not lose your listings for your website. Now I do also want to talk about the sign-in form and also add listing. So let's say for example, someone visits your website and they wanna create an account, right? They'll first click on sign-in. From the sign-in form, they will see that they are not a member and then they can sign up. From here, they can go ahead and enter in some information, right? And they can enter an email address. From here, they will click on I agree and then click on register. Once that's done, the user will go ahead and access that and they will then get their password where they can log in to the website. So next, your visitors will then get a, um, a message right here. So you'll see that we can click on this and this would be the username and the password for that specific user. So I'll just go ahead and copy this and I'll go back to the website and now I'll click on sign in. All right, great. So now your user is now signed into the website and they can now access their dashboard where they'll be prompted to enter in their information and also just general information that you might want to have them add on your directory website. Once the users have also signed up on your website, you will then see that the users display in the user section uh, of your directory site. So that's how you guys can see how people are registering on your website. And lastly, before we go on to the next section and talk about payments and the uh, customer dashboard, I do wanna talk about support. So if you guys do have problems with the theme, if something's just not working and you get frustrated, don't worry about it because you guys get premium support with this product. So for example, I'll go ahead and scroll down and find our theme that we're using. Let's, let's go, let's take a look here. I, I got so many themes, guys. I, I purchased these things all day. So uh, this is just kind of what I do, right? But I'll go ahead and find the listing pro, right? So this is the actual theme. You'll click on the theme, you'll go to support, and then you'll just go ahead and scroll down and access their supports and then open up a support ticket, kind of like I showed you guys earlier. So this is just an example of if you guys get stuck and have problems, uh, feel free to reach out to the support if you guys have any problems with the WordPress theme. All right, so in this part of the video, I'll be explaining the customer dashboard. Now there's a few different options that you can access exclusively through this section. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover all the options in this part of the tutorial. So obviously the first thing is you guys have a dashboard. Yeah, cool, you can see your visitors, your leads, and also your reviews here. And then you, you can click on more insights just to get a little bit more information about uh, that specific statistic, right? So that is the dashboard, right? Now we also have the announcements. So you can create announcements for specific listings. So here we have like the Arizona Luxury Art Club. Uh, we can choose an announcement, book now, or any of these other options. I'll just keep this very basic and just do announcement. And then here you would go ahead and put in an icon, right? Remember earlier how it was FA, I'll just put FA user, right? And this is the call to action title. So this would be like the promotion of the specific announcement or whatever you wanna talk about. Here's the description, right? So, uh, you know, hey, we're offering some pizza, uh, get it while it's hot, you know, something like that. The button text is the text of the button, and then this is the link, so where they would go when they click on that button, right? So I'll just put in my website here. Here we go. All right, wait, 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 wait. there we go. All right, and then we will go ahead and uh, save this, right? So we'll go ahead and save it. All right, so we created an announcement for that specific listing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Arizona Luxury Art Club. So I'll go ahead and scroll down and click on the listing. So here's the current uh, listing, right? And as you guys can tell, we can't really find the announcement. And the reason why the announcement does not display is when you are building your form, you need to enable announcements. So under the theme options here, under the listing detail, you'll see that we have announcements. So we can enable these announcements on our site, right? So you can add it to your sidebar or you can add it in the general content. 
So I'll go ahead and drag in the announcements right here at the top, and then I'll click on Save Changes. Now let's go back to our sites, and then we'll refresh the page. And then let's scroll down here, and here is the announcement. And if they click on the announcement, it will then take them to darylwilson.com. Now I did have one little typo, and I wasn't sure how this worked, but when I used the actual uh, font icon of user, it didn't really work out too well. So if that works out for you or that happens to you, just leave the default and this will display here. Sometimes the FA user can take time to sync up from the API. So if you do get like a square box or something or it's not working, just give it time or you guys can contact their support. But this is how you guys can create announcements uh, for your specific listing page, right? So next we have the events, right? And this is for the user perspective, okay? So these are for visitors that have, or vendors that have registered on your site. So right here, they can click on add new, and then they can go ahead and select an event for their listing. And just like we did earlier on the back end, they can do the same exact thing here. So this would be like the um, event title, so coffee meetup, right? And then they can put an address for the coffee meetup. And the start dates, the end dates, right? The time, I'll just put 12 o'clock, whatever. Uh, it ends here and it ends, you know, there or something like that. And then here is the description. So description for the event. Here we have the event ticket, and then we can also set a specific featured image for that event. So I'll just go ahead and select this one and then click on save. Now remember, when you guys do have events, you guys will need to have the events um, builder, I'm sorry, you need to create the events on the actual site so users can see them. So you'll need to go ahead and edit the page builder and then add the events section so people can actually see the events. But what I'll do right here is just go ahead and check it out. So here you can see that we have our uh, events. I'll click on edits, and here they can go ahead and edit anything about the events. Now let's say, for example, you wanna approve this event. You will then go to your dashboard as an admin and under events, we'll click on events. And then here we have the coffee meetup. Now, usually this is in a pending state. However, since I'm posting this as an admin, I don't really need approval. But for those of you who are uh, allowing vendors onto your site, it will be in a pending state. So just make sure that you approve it so that you can list it on your sites. Now that I've actually approved it, what we'll do is just go ahead and go to events. I'll drag it over here. And then the events will be displayed right there. So we have a coffee meetup, we have the image, and everything looks really good. So that's how we can add events onto our uh, current directory websites. Let's go ahead and keep crushing this. Let's keep going. You guys are doing really good. You know, even myself, you know, give me a give me a nice comment. You know, this video takes me a long time to make and I have to give a lot of energy in these videos. <laughs> you know, so it, it is it is work, you know. So uh, I've showed you guys the events, and now we also have coupons, right? So users can create coupons for specific listings. So for sauce and barrel, uh, you guys can see they did a really good job right here, right? So one pizza, and then coupon code Daryl, and this gives uh, 30, we can do either dollar or percent, right? I'll just say this gives 30% off your pizza. 30% off. The coupon starts on this day at this time, right? And it ends on this day at this time, okay? There we go. And then the button name, this will be like a get deal, right? And then we have coupon details. And then you can also add a featured image for that specific coupon. Uh, let's see what we can, let's see what we can put here. Uh, I'll just put the, I'll put the girl, why not? It looks happy. And then I'll click on save. All right, so now that we created the actual uh, coupon, let's go ahead and see if it's on the page, right? So let's go back to our sites. Let's take a quick look. Right now, this was the sauce barrel, right? It was a sauce barrel listing. This one right here. I'll go ahead and click on that. And then we'll scroll down and it looks like it is not here. And hopefully you guys know why it's not here. It's here because we need to add it on the listing, right? Because we have not added it on the list builder. It can be a little, uh, I guess you can say frustrating because you're like, where is it? We need to actually add it on the actual, um, on the listing page. So let's go back to general and then we'll go to our listing details, right? And then we have the discounts and offers, right? So I'll go ahead and drag this up here and then click on save changes. We'll go back to the site and we'll refresh the page. 
And then let's scroll down here and voila. So there is the coupon. Now, one thing to consider guys, when users do add the coupons, they need to put the correct date. And also you as an admin need to make sure that you drag in the offers and the discounts and the deals. Because if you guys don't drag this in and they create coupons, they will not be displayed on the listing. So you kind of control whether you want the coupons to be displayed on the listing page. All right, let's go back over here and we're gonna go ahead and go to menu. Now you guys can have users add their own menus, right? All right, so let's go ahead now and create a menu. So at the top right here, we have add new. Now how this works is the all types is categories and all groups are subcategories. It's also a little confusing the way they have worded this. So just think of types as categories and think of groups as subcategories, all right? So first let's create a listing or pick a listing. We'll pick the sushi, right? So here we have sushis. Now we need to add in some types and also groups. So the first thing that we're gonna do is add in a main category, okay? So this would just be like food, right? food. And for the groups, I'll put in sushi, right? Because sushi is a subcategory of food, right? Okay, so we have the types and then we have the uh, groups. So over here under groups, we're going to select sushi. So you can see here how the food is the main category and then groups is the subcategory. And now we're going to list, okay, well, what kind of sushi do we have? Well, we're gonna put tuna and uh, the regular price is $10, but it's on sale for $5, amazing. This sushi uh, is the best. This is gonna be a popular item. We're gonna add a spice level. Here we can go ahead and insert an image of the sushi. Of course, I don't really have anything, but I'll just go ahead and upload this image and select this. And then I will click on add menu item, all right. So uh, we, here we have the actual menu, right? So we have some tuna stuff like that. So let's go ahead and click on view all menu. And this is where all of the items will be displayed, right? So you'll just go through the process and create uh, more menu items for that specific uh, listing. Let's take a look here. Let's go back over here and take a quick look and find the sushi restaurant and see if it has a menu. So let's go ahead and go to Sushi Kashiba. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and scroll down here. So we have the menu item, which is food, right? And then we have the tuna, which is $5. And then the tuna would be displayed in the background. I know it doesn't look the best, but if you have a bunch of really nice looking food items, it'll display really nice. So that's how we can add a menu to our actual listing. All right. Now, one thing also to consider guys is again, make sure the menu listing is on the actual uh, layouts because if the menu is not there, it will not be displayed. So just make sure that if you do wanna have menus on your listings, you need to add the menu tab there so it displays on your website. All right, so let's keep going. Now there is another option here for online food ordering services. So if you guys are using Grubhub or Zomato or Food Panda, you guys can go ahead and enter the service URL right there. So users can order directly through Food Panda or Grubhub or Uber Eats. And if you guys are in, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Thailand, you guys use Grab, right? Maybe they can add Grab here. And if you guys are in, uh, was it Lithuania, you guys use uh, Zap or Storm or something like that. I, f I forgot, it's it's one of those apps. You know, there's there's everyone has their own version. So uh, yeah, that is menus. Let's go ahead and go over here to listings. So this is just a, a good overview of your listings. You guys can go ahead and edit these listings at any time. You guys can also remove these and also change the plan for the current listings. Here we have inbox. So if you guys do get messages from interested buyers or interested customers, the messages will be displayed right here. Next, we have the invoices. And again, invoices will be displayed here. Pretty self-explanatory. So next we have the saved. And if you save stuff on your current, uh, you know, on, on your website, they will actually go over here and they will be displayed. So I'll go ahead and refresh the page. And there you go. So you can see how you can save specific listings. Next, we have the ad campaigns. But we'll come back to that a little bit. And we also have the review section where you will see reviews about your current listings. All right, so that's pretty much the overview of the actual dashboard. You guys can also go up here and access your profile and log out. And then we also have some more information like the contact supports, or they can go ahead and click right here and add another listing. 
All right, next, let's talk about ad campaigns. So here at the bottom left, I'll click on ad campaigns. Now, when you create ads, they will automatically be shown right here. So we can see all the campaigns and only the active campaigns. And you can also click on one and get more information about what you paid and also see where it's placed here under the placements. So let me just show you guys how to uh, create a campaign from the vendor's point of view. So let's click on add new. And here we have choose a listing to add a campaign. So when the vendor creates a listing, they will then see a list of their listings, right? So I'll just go ahead and click on the uh, Max Mendoza, right? And here you'll be able to set how many days you want this campaign to run for. Now in the next section, we'll be talking about how to create specific prices for these, but I just want to demonstrate how to use the ad before we jump into pricing and payment gateways and stuff like that. So I'll just say, you know what? I want this to be placed for you know 30 days, right? And here we have three different options. So we can do spotlight, top of the search, and also the sidebar. So let's say for example, someone searches for something like for your uh, listing, you'll see that these right here are advertisements, right? So we have ad and also ad. The other listing is the spotlight, right? And this is where you can kind of control where you want the ads to be displayed on your website. For example, uh, let's go ahead and you know what, there we go. So these right here are the ads. Now you guys can actually display these with the actual page builder with the ads elements. So that's what this is referring to, okay? And then we also have the other one, which is the sidebar, which you can show ads on the sidebar of the listing. But I'll just go ahead and select top of the search for now. And we'll talk about these two in the next section. But for right now, I'll just use bank transfer and just say, I accept, right? So just to be clear here, we have Max Mendoza, Access Homes, right? Let's just do 40 days, 40 days. And this would be the price, right? I know this is a very high price, but uh, don't worry, we can change this a little bit later. Maybe like a dollar per day, right? Not $40 or $50 per day, right? That's, that's really expensive. So uh, at the bottom right, I'll click on pay now. All right, cool. Now this is specifically only for direct wire methods, okay? So um, let's say for example, the person pays you, right? With the, uh, you know, direct wire, which many of you might not do this, uh, you guys will use probably payment gateways, but let me just demonstrate uh, where to actually see the actual payment from the website owner point of view. So let's go back over here to dashboard. And then now we will see invoices, right? And here we have ads invoices. So these are the uh, invoices where you will see the ads. So right here, you'll see that we have $2,100 and it's pending by us, right? So we have to make the decision whether we want this to display or not. Here I can say, you know, let me just take a look at this really quick, make sure everything's cool, okay, everything looks, you know, no scams are going on, right? Uh, then you can go ahead and approve this. But first let me go ahead and just jump back to the vendor's point of view, just to show you what's going on so far. So over here we have ads campaign, and we only have these two right now, right? We don't have the other um, ad because we have not approved it as a website owner but let's go ahead and approve it. So to approve a ad, I'll just go ahead and click on this pending and click on okay. So as of right now, this ad is now active and uh, it's working. So let's go back to the uh, vendor, right? And refresh the page. You'll then see that Max Mendoza now displays. So this ad is currently running and you guys can actually test this out just by simply going to your search and just testing it out, right? So let's just go to the website here and take a look. So we are uh, looking for Max Mendoza, right? Because that is the uh, ad that was paid for, right? So we have Max Mendoza and uh, there it is. So Max Mendoza, you can see it's an ad and this automatically displays at the top. And uh, yeah, so we can get a quick preview of it and stuff like that. But um, that's how you guys can run ads on your current uh, website. Pretty cool, right? So let's go ahead now and talk about money. It's been a long time and, and long overdue since we've talked about money, right? So I showed you guys everything in the back end, right? I'm pretty sure uh, we are uh, clear with all this, right? The, the dashboard, uh, the announcements, the events, all of this stuff. So um, feel free to just kind of, you know, check this stuff out, but make sure you learn this because this is what you're gonna have to uh, support with when vendors have issues on your website. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about payment gateways. Let's go over here to click on dashboard. And then here we have pricing plans, okay? So first, let's just click on pricing plans. Now here they did a really good job. You know, we have three different pricing plans, right? We have free, basic, and premium. 
But uh, let's just go ahead and create our own pricing plan just so we're all on the same page here. So up here, I'll click on add a new price page plan or add a new price plan, right? And this will be like the premium plan or, or premium super, right? And you can add a background image. Now this background image will be displayed on the actual uh, spot when people have to pay for something. So let's go ahead and click on add a listing. And this is basically what we're, we're designing right here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add features for this specific page. So these are plans, right? So let's go ahead and take a look back over here. So the background image will display in the back here. You know, it's up to you if you wanna add a background image, but it will display where this black banner is here. So let me first explain how all of this works. Here, I'll just click on enable all following, right? However, if you want to restrict specific features of a plan, you can go ahead and select it. Like for example, for this premium plan, I don't wanna offer announcements or menu or deals and offers because I wanna create a higher tier for that, okay? So this is the premium, the premium super, but we're gonna create another one called premium super plus, okay? So uh, you also have the option for paper listing, or you can do a package, okay? So a package is more of a like all-in-one solution, right? Like you, you get a package of, of all of this stuff, but let's just first do pay per listing, right? So you'll go ahead and enter some description about the plan. Now, this right here is very important. So this will only display if you have vertical three view on the pricing plan page, okay? So some layouts on this theme will not show description. Other layouts will. I don't know why that is. That's just the way the theme's made, guys. So again, I am just the middleman here, but uh, I'll just put in, this is some description. Now, if you did not select an image, this is the color of the background box. So this is the background color box that they're referring to, right? So next we have the max images in gallery. This will restrict the specific amount of images the vendor can add to that specific uh, plan or listing, right? So if it's empty, it will be unlimited. However, you can always set a max images. So just to make sure the user's not uploading like 100 images, right? Because that might take up a lot of room on your server. Now let's go ahead and go to price. So here we have price. Now they do not say, do not use currency sign or else it actually will not display. You guys can set the currency in the, in the theme options here, okay? Under the general tab. So don't put a currency sign or else the, uh, the plan will not work. So I'll just say this is like uh, $100, right? How long does this last for? How long will the listing be available on the website? Well, I'll just say 30 days. Next, we have the option for continue free plan after expire. So let's say for example, they create a premium plan, right? After it expires and they don't renew, we can actually fall back on the actual free plan. So this is like, a, uh, like an insurance plan. So saying, look guys, if, if you don't pay for the premium again, don't worry about it too much because we'll follow you back on the free plans if we offer any free plans. And then also we have hot plan, which just shows a little banner that this is like a hot deal or something like that. So let's go ahead and just uh, take a look here and just publish this and just take a look at what we're done. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, next plan. So I'll go ahead and refresh this page. All right, and here we go. So now you'll see that we have the premium super, right? So we have per listing, and then we can see all the features that it offers. However, we do not offer the menu announcements and the deals and discounts because we did not include that in this specific plan, right? So that makes sense, right? So you can restrict or add features based off the plan or package they are purchasing. Now these are all per listing, right? So per listing, per listing, and per listing. Now let's say for example, you're like, you know, Daryl, I wanna add in these features for this plan, right? Instead of actually creating a new plan, you guys can just say, you know what? I want to enable the menu and the announcement for this plan, and then I'll click on update, all right? Let's go ahead and refresh the page here. All right, and now you'll see that those are now enabled. However, just the deals and offers and discounts are, right? So that's just a general overview about how to create a plan. Now let's talk about, maybe you wanna add more custom fields, right? Like uh, here, we'll do like a uh, premium support. Premium support. And I'll also add this. And then we'll also include free breakfast, okay? And then I'll click on update. All right. Now, when you guys add custom fields, there is no option to turn them off, okay? So what I mean by that is if I go back to our table right here and I scroll down, you will see premium support and free breakfast is included, okay? So just remember, you can't create the X 
for custom fields. Maybe that's a feature that they might add in the future. Maybe you wanna show them, well, you know, um, you know, if you do this, you'll get more, but unfortunately you guys cannot create the X for custom fields. At least I am not sure if there is, maybe they will introduce that in a future update or it's buried in their facts, but I looked everywhere for it and I could not find it. However, you guys can just remove it, right? And then update it and then it will uh, reflect the plan. So you'll see premium support will, will disappear right there. You see that? So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Next, let's create a new plan. So let's go over here and add a new pricing plan. And this will be the super premium plus. Maybe we can add a plus sign in there. Let's see if we can do that. We're going to enable all of these this time, all right? And we're gonna scroll down and instead of pay per listing, we're gonna select package. Now, instead of offering per listing, I'm gonna say, you know what? How many posts can you create with this listing? Well. I'll say 10. So this will give you the access to create 10 listings with this specific package. And then you can do the same exact thing, right? So um, I'll just say that this is $50, right? Instead of uh, pay per listing. And then also we have duration. So I'll put 45 days this time because they might need more than you know a day to post all of their listings. So I'll just say, you know, we'll give you 45 days for this, you know? And then we also have the same options where they can continue with free plan after it expires. And then, you know, make this a hot plan, you know, make a hot, <laughs> right? So uh, once that's done, we will go ahead and click on publish. All right, and now let's go ahead and view this plan. So let's go back over here, refresh the page. All right, and I believe it is up here. There we go, super premium plus, Woo! So this is per package. Notice the difference, so this is uh, 45 days, right? And this is a per package. They get 10 max listings. And it's just the same thing, except this is a package deal. So they'll be allowed to uh, create up to 10 listings with this specific package. So that makes sense. Now let's just run a test transaction here, right? Let's just, let's just see what's going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just continue with this and we're gonna pay this again, right? So as the user selects the package, they will then go ahead and fill out all the information for that specific package, right? So they'll go ahead and fill out all of the company information. They will pick a category and they'll just go ahead and uh, create a listing. Now they can create more listings in the back end because it's not going to give the user uh, the ability to post all 10 immediately because they might need more time, right? So they first will have to post at least one listing and then in the back end in their dashboard, they will then be allowed to post more listings according to the package. All right, so I went ahead and I uploaded some information and I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and preview now. All right, so you guys can see here, <laughs> my hotel is this my logo, but it says your listing is pending. Please proceed to make it published. So next they'll have to click on pay and publish. So what's really cool about this theme is that they can get a visual of their, um, of their listing before they pay for it. And I do like that. So it leaves it in a draft state, okay? And they can also edit this as well. So if they're like, oh, you know what? This logo looks really bad. I wanna upload these images instead. They can edit this at any time and this will allow them to adjust their listing. But let's click on pay and publish. Next, your vendors will be prompted to purchase the package. So. Uh, you'll see that since I didn't put an image, we have that placeholder, remember? That is from the general settings. Here we have the bank transfer, PayPal, and also Stripe. But for now, let's just use bank transfer because we haven't integrated payment gateways yet. So here, I'll click on proceed to next, and then proceed to next as well. And awesome, so at this point, the user has now paid for the package. Now, does this page look similar? It should, right? Because uh, this is actually in the ads invoice again. So we can go over here to the, so we can go over here to the invoices and click on ads invoices. Now, when the actual user uh, creates the listings, it will also tell them that they can publish more listings in their account. So since this user has up to 10 listings, uh, it's like, hey, go publish your listings. Don't forget about it. I do like that notice. I think that's pretty helpful. Now let's take a quick look at the website owner and you guys will see that under the listing invoices, so this is not ads invoices, okay? This is listing invoices that we will see that this is pending and it's waiting for us to approve it. So I'll just go ahead and approve it. All right, cool. So now this is active, okay? And let's go back over here and I will refresh the admin, I'm sorry, the vendors uh, uh, dashboard. You know, I get so mixed up in these videos website owner, vendor, like it's hard, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a tongue twister. But let's go over here and click on packages. So you'll see that the person has the package, they paid for it and it's currently active. 
So this is how your vendors can know uh, what's going on. They can see their packages. They can see the ad campaigns that are running, their invoices. Everything is here for them. So I do like this dashboard. I think the interface is really easy to use. So if you guys have any questions about this section or if I missed something, feel free to let me know in the comments below. But I believe I did my best to answer, uh, go through every option. So now that I talked about the dashboard, now let's talk about integrating payment gateways. And then we'll be talking about the Google Maps API. All right, so in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to integrate payment gateways onto your directory website. This way, you guys can start accepting credit cards on your directory website. Now, I'll first be showing you guys how to integrate Stripe onto your uh, website. This is a free service. It does not cost you anything. It's primarily for United States, Europe, and also parts of South America. I'll also be showing you how to integrate the PayPal payment gateway onto your website. Now, I do realize many people watching my videos are from other parts of the world where those payment gateways are not available. Uh, Listing Pro does have free plugins that you guys can use for specific regions of the world. For example, Mercado Pago, this is a very popular payment gateway for South America. Also, Brazil, uh, PayU India, this is one for India and also Paystack. This one's primarily for South Africa, Ghana, and Nigeria. Now these are free extensions, so it does not cost you anything. So if you are from those specific regions, you guys will just need to make an account and then just copy and paste the API into the actual dashboard of this plugin, okay? So uh, that's that. Also, you guys can use two checkouts. So two checkout is also a very popular uh, payment gateway you guys can use. So if these two uh, payment gateways are not supported in your country, feel free to check out these other uh, payment gateways and see what works best for you. All right, but uh, to get started, we're gonna go ahead and go to our dashboard here, and we're first going to integrate the Stripe payment gateway. So let's go ahead and go to theme options. So just click on general here. All right, and uh, let's go over here to payments, right? And here we have general. So before we actually create the payment gateways, we might want to just take a look at some of these general options, like do you want recurring payments? Uh, auto recurring payments. Yeah, why not? That's that's always good. You know, it, it kind of commits the user, right? You can also change the currency here uh, and just other general information about the actual payment process. Okay. So uh, yeah, feel free to adjust those options to your liking and then just click on save changes. Now, first we're going to click on Stripe. Okay. Now, uh, stripe.com again is a free service. I'll go ahead and open up stripe.com. So this is stripe.com and if you guys are brand new to WordPress, uh, stripe.com is a free uh, payment merchant service. It does not cost anything. There's no credit check and there's nothing to get started. However, they do take like a 3% fee transaction or something like that. So uh, that is the only drawback, but unfortunately that's just the way the industry works um, altogether. So every, every merchant service charges like a 2.9% transaction fee. But uh, what you'll do here is you'll go through the process and sign up. You guys will need a bank account to get set up with Stripe. Once you guys go through the process and you create a Stripe account, it will bring you to your customer dashboard. It looks something like this. And I realize um, they always tend to change this interface, guys. So if they do change it, uh, I'm sorry. That's really out of my control. But uh, I'll do my best to keep updating uh, these videos so it all looks up to date. But uh, once you guys actually create your account, you guys will click on Developers. And all we're going to do here is just copy and paste some some letters and that's it. It's really, really easy. So on the left side, you're going to see API keys, right? Now, currently at the time of making this um, this directory website, I'm in live mode. So right now this is live and we're going to take real payments, right? If I want to take some or if I want to do like a demo or just test this out, I can click on test mode here and these are tests. Now, people do this because they just want to see if their website is connected to the service before they start accepting payments on their site. So I think this is a good idea to open up uh, test mode before we go forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the publishable key, right? Go back over here. And I'm just going to paste that right there, right? So we have Stripe and this is Sandbox. Sandbox means demo, okay? So here we have publishable key, right? And then we also have the secret key. And we're just gonna take that, paste it there, save changes, and we're done, that's it. All you guys have to do. Really, really simple, right? I mean, that was not too complicated. 
Now we can actually test this, right? So we can test this to see if this is working or not by simply going ahead and purchasing any one of our plans because it is connected now. I mean, that was so easy. I mean, I shouldn't even made a chapter of, of this uh, video for this action <laughs> because it's it's so easy, but uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, oh, sorry, we gotta go add a listing, right? So we're gonna add a listing here and we're going to use uh, that specific service. So I'm just gonna click on continue, purchase any of the plans that we made earlier. I'll go ahead and make a quick listing here to speed up the video and I'll click on save and preview. And here's my general listing, right? Just a boring listing, but we're just, we're just in test mode right now. So not to worry here, I'll click on pay and publish and here I'll select Stripe and click on proceed to next. Now, since we enabled recurring payments, your customers will be notified this is a recurring payment. So it's just letting them know that this is recurring. And I do like this because again, that sort of commits the user to your website, but uh, right here, I'll click on proceed to next. They are now going to input their email and then their credit card number. So I'll, I'll put it in uh, an email here. Now for test mode, you're just going to enter 42424242. And then we'll just throw in some other just random information, right? This is all random, okay? So this is not real info, but for test mode, you do need to enter 4242 all the way across. And then I'll click on pay. And congratulations, the transaction was successful. Now, in order to see if this really was successful and it's just not the WordPress theme making an error, we can go ahead and test this and see if we have received the payment, right? So I believe the payment was for $105, right? So let's go over here to payments and there you go, $105. And the subscription was created and you can see that we have the email right there. So we know that it's connected, right? Now let's just say, okay, well, great. I know how to use the demo, right? And you know how to use the test mode, but how do we accept real credit card payments on our websites? Well, just unclick test mode and then do the same exact process, right? So test mode, developers, API keys, and then you just need to copy and paste this information. So let's go back over here and take a quick look. Dashboard, we're gonna go down to the theme options and click on payments. We'll click on Stripe. And instead of sandbox, you're going to enter in live. Okay, so live means you're going to accept real payments. And then you'll just go ahead and copy this right there. Paste that in the secret key. Wait, 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 is that the right one? No, publishable key, sorry, I got that wrong. Publishable keys at the bottom, okay? And the secret key, yeah, there we go. Okay, it's like backwards, it's invert, my bad, my bad. Here we go. Paste that there and then save changes. And when you create save changes, this website can now start accepting real credit card payments from people all around the world. Just make sure that you guys do have a valid SSL. Now this comes included with Hostinger and Name Heroes Hosting. So if you guys are using the recommended hosting, good job, you guys get a free SSL. If you're not, well, sorry, <laughs> you know, oops. Just ask your ask your uh, your hosting company to install the SSL, but SSLs are required for you to accept payments on the website, it will not work if you do not have an SSL. You might get some some, some sort of like really weird error or really weird uh, typo or something like that. So yeah, congrats, you guys now have, know how to accept that's on your sites. But you know, my followers, guys, they always tend to buy stuff on my website when they watch this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and just disable this. You know, I don't want people to really spend money, which has happened to me in the past a lot when, I'm, when I make these tutorials, it's, it's pretty crazy. But uh, now that we've done that, Let's now integrate PayPal. PayPal is a very popular payment gateway, and this is like global, right? You guys can use PayPal pretty much anywhere around the world. So we do have Sandbox and we do also have Live, but I'm just gonna go with Live at this point because I think we all here know uh, what to do, okay? So uh, yeah, so that's, we're gonna do Live. Now let's go over here to PayPal. Now for PayPal guys, you will need a business account. Okay, so PayPal uh, business account is required and you guys will have to pay a fee for that, unfortunately. The personal account, I believe, no longer works for a lot of these uh, themes because the developers just want people that are using it for business to pay a subscription. Sorry, that's just how it is. But uh, if you're making big bucks like me, then you guys got nothing to worry about, you know? So let's go ahead and take a look here. Well, first go ahead and go to our account settings, right? I'll go ahead and log in here. All right, after we do that, you will see account access and then you'll see API access. Go ahead and click on update. Next, we're gonna scroll down 
and we're gonna see Manage API Credentials. I'm going to click on Manage API Credentials. All right, so once you click on Manage API Credentials, you will see the API username, the API password, and then the signature, right? So I'll go ahead and click on Show, right? This is my API username, and we'll just go back to the website and just copy and paste everything. So API username, paste it, right? And then you'll do the same thing for the API password and the API signature. So we have API password and API signature. So just go ahead and copy and paste the actual API credentials onto your site. And also make sure that you enter your PayPal email right here. And this is the email that you guys used to sign up with. Okay, so uh, make sure that is the same email that you used to sign up with or you're gonna have problems and the money will go to somebody else. So uh, just double check that. And then once you're done, you'll click on save changes and then voila, you guys have now connected PayPal onto your uh, directory website where you can have users pay you with PayPal. Now there is one last option I do want to talk about and that is the tax option. If you do wanna enable tax, you can. However, you guys might want to uh, consult taxjar.com. Taxjar.com tells you if your state recommends or requires you to pay taxes online. There are various states that do not, like for example, Nevada, I believe there is no online digital tax. Same thing with California as well. There is no digital tax. So you guys might want to consult uh, taxjar.com to see if your state pays digital taxes online. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this part of the video. Again, if you guys feel those payment gateways do not work for you, feel free to check out their free extensions uh, like Mercado Pago and also these other ones. I'm sorry I can't make videos for every one of them, but unfortunately websites like Paystack are restricted in my state or my uh, area. So for example, if I try to go to paystack.com, so these are some errors that I get when I try to go to other countries payment processors. It just restricts me and that's just kind of out of my control. So I cannot make tutorials on a lot of these other, uh, you know, payment gateways and stuff like that. So I do apologize for that, but uh, maybe in the future I could, but um, yeah, that's just, uh, you know, a general uh, rundown of payment gateways. So if you guys have any questions for me, guys, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section. All right, guys, in this part of the video, I'll be showing you how to integrate the Google Maps API key onto your directory websites. Uh, this way, users can see the maps when they're searching for specific listings. Let me give you an example. So I have already inserted the Google Maps API onto the websites, and I'll just go ahead and click on a listing. When I click on the listing and I scroll down, you will then see that there is this map right here where the users can actually see the location of where it's located. So that's why you might want to integrate the Google Maps API. However, Google Maps has created an update where it's a paid feature now. So if you guys do use Google Maps, uh, there is a small fee to use the API key to embed it onto your websites. And again, that, that's a little bit out of my control, but I'll just show you guys how to embed it onto your website. Now I have already created another video that shows how to embed the Google Maps API. So what I'm gonna do is take the section from this video and I'm going to place it in this video. This video is showing people how to make a classified ads website with WordPress. Um, it's the same process. So if you guys do see like different websites, don't worry, don't panic. Uh, all you guys will do is insert the API key onto the theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and show that part of the version of that video onto this section right here. So let's go. All right, welcome to the Google Maps section. Now this is the end of the video, but um, for those of you who want to add geolocate onto your website, which is a very important feature, I'll be showing you how to add that to your classified ads websites. Now you guys saw over here that a lot of these ads, they have this Google Maps section, but we have this big, you know, something went wrong. Also, users cannot search by geolocation, which can lead to a little frustration because we wanna make things very convenient and easy for our visitors. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to Google Maps where you guys can go ahead and sign up. It'll bring you to something like this right here. I'll go ahead and put this in the description. So once you guys get here, you guys will click on get started. You guys can also get there by just going to Google Maps API and just signing up. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and log into my uh, Gmail account right here. All right, so this is the Google Cloud Platform. Now they're gonna ask you some questions. They're gonna prompt you to you know, um, agree with the terms. You might have to put some account information. You might have to agree to the terms of service. So just go through the process of this. And once you guys are done with the setup process, 
I will meet you guys on the overview page. Now, once you guys get to page three, you guys will need to go ahead and input your business name and also your credit card. Now, there is a very small fee with Google Maps for using their API. I think it's like three or five dollars a month or something like that. It's really not that expensive. So um, you guys will have to go ahead and put it in your debit or credit card there. And once you guys are done, I'll go ahead and meet you guys on the very next page. So here we have an overview of a lot of different APIs. Now, the first thing that we have to do is right here, we're going to create a project. So we'll click on my first project and I'll click on new project. And I'll just name this like classifieds, right? Just, uh, you know, just so I know what's going on here. So classifieds and then for location, I'll just go ahead and just put no organization and then just click on create. All right, cool. So now you guys can see I have created my classifieds. Now we do need to enable APIs for our project. So essentially what this does is that this pulls information from Google and it puts it down to a key and we can take that key and put it on our website. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add geolocation API. So go ahead and click on this and then we're going to click on enable. So we are going to enable this API. All right. So now you can see that this has been enabled. It's right there. Let's go and click on overview. Now we're going to activate four more APIs. So right here, click APIs. It brings us to a new page. I don't really know uh, why it does that, but uh, we're now going to select places API. And I will also enable this API. All right, cool. Let's go back over here to overview and pick APIs. I'm going to close that. I guess it closed automatically. Huh? Now right here for maps, I'm going to click on view all. There are some that we need to actually uh, find right here. So we're going to select the geo coding API. So let's see, we're not, there it is, this one right here. And I will enable this. All right, cool. So we got three so far. Let's go ahead and go to overview. Pick APIs. And now we're going to select the mapped JavaScript API. So I'll click on that. And I'll click on update or I'm sorry, enabled. All right, cool. So we have four. Now we're going to select one more right here. So let's go back to overview and pick APIs and we're going to select the map static API. So over here, I'll click on view all the map static API. I'll click on this and I will also enable this API. All right, cool. So once you guys are done with that, we can click on overview. So next let's go ahead and click on credentials and we're going to go ahead and create some credentials. So right here, I'll click on create a credentials and click on API key. And this is the API key that we need. So what I'll do is I will copy this and I'll click on close and that's it. Now, if you guys do want to rename your API key over here, you'll click on edit API key. And this can be something like the maps API or just something that lets you know what's going on here. Now you can restrict this key as well if you want to do that. So if someone finds out your API key, you can restrict it to the specific APIs that you set. And uh, you can also restrict it to your specific website. So basically saying this API will only be good uh, for my website. If you want to go that route, it's not mandatory, but uh, if you want to go ahead and do that, that's up to you. So right here, I will click on save changes. Now you guys also need to make sure that you have a credit card linked to this account because now if you get an error saying this is for development purposes only, that's because your billing information is not correct. So they do recognize that you have to have a valid credit card uh, in order to use the service. All right. So now that you guys have your API key, let me show you guys where to place it. So let's go over here to dashboard. You'll go down to theme options and then we're going to click on general. The general, you know, I just click on it because it just shows all the options, but you'll just click on map right here. And all you'll need to do is just go ahead and copy and paste the, the credentials and just paste it right here and make sure Google map is selected. Now there are other map types as well. Like there's open street and Mapbox API. If you guys do want to use those services, you guys are more than welcome to, I believe the open street map is free. I think this is like the default one that they used. So, uh, yeah, this is also a pretty good alternative to Google maps. But a lot of people prefer to see Google Maps, unfortunately. So if you do want to embed it, you'll just select Google Maps and click on Save Changes. And then after this, uh, when your visitors create listings, it will show the location via Google Maps. And they will also see them on your current listings on your directory website. 
Well guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I think I went through all the features and explained everything. So I really do hope you guys enjoy your directory website. If there's anything that I missed at all, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to get to every comment and find out uh, if I went through every option, but I think I did. But uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like this video and I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care. All right, congratulations. So at this point, you guys are like webmasters of directory uh, websites. You guys know how to manage it and you know how to properly run your classified or directory websites. So now let's go ahead and talk about the next step, which is to market it. Now, a lot of users ask me about how to market your directory websites, and I'll go ahead and give you guys various ways on how to get more traffic to your directory website. So let's get started. All right, in this part of the video, I'll be explaining how to market your directory websites. Now, there's several different ways on how to approach this. So uh, I've actually created a really long blog post that shows you 20 different ways on how to market your websites. And I'll go through some of these and talk about the importance of which ones I think are the most important. Now, also, if you guys are watching this from my other channels, you guys can go ahead and change the language here and the article will uh, change to your native language. Now, there are some here that I really do want to talk about, but we do have 20 different ways on how to uh, promote your director websites. But the really important ones that I'm going to want to cover is uh, first off is the build links and guest posting on other blogs. Now, this is crucial because this is how you actually gain authority. For example, if we go to Google, we would type in best directory websites. Here you'll see that we have this uh, blog that is talking about 21 uh, directory websites that still have value. Now, the reason why this is so essential is because when these people write about you from large authority blogs, uh, you will then get um, a lot of traffic to your directory websites, yet you also get the domain authority. So if you guys are not familiar, uh, if large websites point to your website, your website will boost higher in the search results. So you do want to reach out to large authority websites and have them write, um, I guess you can say articles about your directory website. For example, you'll see here how they're writing about this one website. And I mean, this website is getting tons of traffic from Search Engine Journal. It's not just about making a website and thinking it'll just go to number one. You're going to need help and you're going to have to outreach. And it is a tedious process, but once it's done, it's done. You know, God, these guys have a lot of pop ups, <laughs> you know, like that is way too many pop ups they have on their websites. Uh, so that is one of them, right? Building the backlinks through uh, guest posting and other blogs. Now, if you're not familiar with guest posting, guest posting is when you go to other websites and you offer to write high quality content for that specific uh, company or website. When you do that, they will give you a backlink to your website. So for example, you'll see all these links. Let's just say, for example, Bears Cup was the original writer. You can see that Bears Cup actually included themselves in the article. A lot of companies do this, tons of companies do this. It's a way to get free content for the website, yet it's also a way for the websites to get more exposure. So let me go ahead and just scroll up here and talk about some really important ones. So build links and connections. That is extremely important. I highly recommend that. All right. Now, uh, there are some other ones here like uh, Facebook groups. Don't spam on Facebook groups. Just kind of recommend companies if people ask for it. But don't go to groups and say, oh, you know, have you seen this website? It's a very quick way to get banned and uh, you will probably never get found. And the next one that I think is probably very important is the contact non-competitor, but relevant websites. The main reason why I keep stressing this is because you guys do want to get backlinks to your website. Backlinks are essential. So let's say, for example, we have OfferUp, right? OfferUp is a very popular website that enables people to buy and sell from a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. You might want to go to OfferUp and offer to advertise or see if you can get some sort of partnership with websites like this because it's individuals doing business together and these individuals probably own businesses, right? So they might want to list their website on your directory website. So you want to make sure that you reach out to similar websites that offer some sort of relevance and see if you can get a backlink and even offer to advertise on those websites. That's actually a pretty good strategy. You do want to find uh, companies that, you know, get a lot of traffic so that you can bring it back to your directory website. And you just want to get the name out for your, uh, for your websites. Another one is influencer marketing, guys. Influencer marketing is probably one of the most popular ways. Now, if you guys are new to this and you're just like, you know, I don't know any influencers. There are websites like Heapsy, Upfluence, and Mighty Scout 
that will actually, uh, they hire influencers. They, you know, you show them, they will show the influencer your products, your websites. And then if the influencers like it, they'll go ahead and promote their, your website to millions of followers. So uh, influencers, in my opinion, is the most cost effective way to get traffic. You can go to Facebook ads, but let's be honest, you know, I can easily spend thousands of dollars on Facebook ads and never get an ROI, right? Never get a return. But I could pay some influencer $2,000, $3,000, and I can get millions of views and maybe even uh, other influencers might want to promote my website because they see other influencers promoting it, thinking that it's safe. You know, that a lot of the times in my business, when I promote a specific plugin, a lot of other YouTubers start to promote that plugin as well because they feel, well, you know, if Daryl's recommending it, Daryl's large, he's a, he has a, an authority in this industry. So I think I'm safe also to recommend this specific plugins, which happens all of the time. You guys probably seen when I talk about a plugin, a lot of other influencers and YouTubers immediately start talking about it because they feel that um, it's safe to talk about, right? Another one is the Chamber of Commerce. Now, uh, if you guys are a local business, every neighborhood council, every uh, neighborhood community does have some sort of chamber in commerce. Reach out to them, see if they can spread out their word for you. A lot of these uh, chamber of commerce organizations will promote websites for free just because they want to help out people that live in the neighborhood. But uh, yeah, I do have a lot of other, uh, a lot of other ways on how to market your websites. Uh, also, creating blog posts. Blog posts are another great free alternative. As you guys can see right here, Yelp uh, created a blog post. Now, you guys as a directory website want to promote other businesses, right? So an article like this makes a lot of sense. 25 of the best bagel businesses in the United States. It's like, whoa, who is that? And then you'll see that they wrote about 25 different bagel services. Uh, you know, to me personally, I think this is all BS because how do they know? Have they really tested every bagel company in America? No, they have not, <laughs> you know, but it's just content to keep people entertained and just to, you know, get on the radar. So writing quality content on your website is another great free way because remember, it hits the search engine. You know, it hits the search engine. It's on the internet 24 hours a day. I don't recommend paid ads because a paid ad are a very short-term strategy. Once your, uh, your ad is, you know, once your budget is maxed out, your website disappears forever. And I don't like that. I like the fact that uh, maybe over here on page four, you might get some blog to talk about you or you can talk about yourself and then people will find it in the search engine. You'll see that there's a lot of various websites talking about OfferUp and this is where you wanna be. You want people to start talking about your website because uh, it's a way better cost effective to have this approach than to just, you know, go to Facebook ads. And, you know, when you're on Facebook ads and Google ads, you're pretty much desperate at that point. You don't want to get there. You know, you don't want to do that. It's like, uh, it's like going to page 20 on Google. Once you're on page 20 on Google, you're screwed. You know, there's nothing you can do. But uh, I'll leave this article in the description of this video. I really do hope it helps you guys out. Try to follow the free methods and the organic methods first before you guys jump into any paid marketing because it's a very quick way on how to burn your budget and get discouraged. So I hope this article helped you out. Leave me a nice comment in this article and let me know if it helped you guys out marketing your directory website. Well, everybody, thank you for watching my video. I'm really glad that you guys made it to the end. And again, uh, thank you guys for watching this video. It really does help me out. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, let me know if there's anything I can do to improve my content. Me and my team, we do spend uh, quite a bit of time making these videos. I know it looks really easy, but uh, we create outlines and and we, we do a lot of work behind the scenes, <laughs> you know? So uh, let me know in the comments how I did. And congratulations on your director website from here to journey. Just keep being consistent. You know, it's all about consistency. I cannot stress that enough, no matter what kind of website you're building. So I wish you guys the best of luck and success, and I'll see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.